morning. A sense of anticipation. A time to reflect. So here is fourth down. And Germain takes it deep, throws Miller, intercepted! Hill's got it! Ronaldo Hill! And it is over. The number one team falls. Two teams were direct beneficiaries of Ohio State's stumble. Co-owners of an opportunity. Wisconsin and Michigan now play with the Big Ten title and all its rewards in the balance. This is definitely, you know, what I came to Michigan for. I mean, you can't get any better than this. You're playing for pride and who you are. You're playing for the championship. And to be in this situation is why you play football, and, and it's, it's why it's so fun. The Rose Bowl is the biggest thing there is, and the Rose Bowl is where everybody wants to be in. We came here to go to the Rose Bowl. That's why, that's why I came to Wisconsin, to go to the Rose Bowl. We're playing for a lot. We're playing for everything right now, and uh, uh, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Mike Samuel's got it nailed. Neither the stakes nor the crowd can get much bigger than what we've got in the big house today. 111,000, maybe the largest crowd ever to watch football in the United States. As Wisconsin visits Michigan, the last two remaining Big Ten unbeatens with Ohio State's shocking removal by Michigan State from those ranks last week, the road to Pasadena is indeed wide open for both these two. Welcome to Ann Arbor, Dave Barnett, along with Bill Curry. Think of Wisconsin as the A student that has turned in all his homework on time, aced all the pop quizzes, but the final begins today, and it's going to count for most of the grade. As usual, you're right, David. And all these players know what the questions are going to be, but we have to play the game to see who can provide the answers. Wisconsin has some great ingredients. Ron Dane, the most intimidating back in America. Plus 21 in turnover margin, number one in America. And number one in the universe in field position, they start their drives on the average from the 39-yard line while forcing the opponents to start on the 25. Combine those ingredients, you got 9-0, the best start since 19 one Now, Michigan, the defending national champions, tagged all year as the poster children for underachievement, even with a seven-game winning streak. But last week against Penn State, they looked like a team Lloyd Carr finally recognized. They started looking like the team that Lloyd Carr wanted, but he's still not satisfied. He wants consistency from the offense and the kicking game to go along with a defense that has given up a grand total of one touchdown in the last 22 quarters. Bottom line, Rose Bowl, powerful emotion, 111,000. If these guys can handle the emotion, we'll have a game for the ages here today. Can you ask for much more? You really can. If Wisconsin wins, they are in Pasadena, if not Tempe. Michigan needs two wins to get there. We look forward to this one as we send you to the studio at Larry B. Thanks very much, Dave. This is truly one of the classic Saturdays in a college football season. We'll be here all day long keeping track of all the scores and the highlights from around the country. You call it whatever you want. Showdown Saturday, perhaps. Put up or shut up Saturday. But we got a whole bunch of ranked teams in action, including six games featuring top 25 teams squaring off against one another in a lot of huge stakes games. And Ricky Williams needing 204 yards rushing to pass Tony Dorsett for the all-time record. Later tonight on ESPN, SEC football, Georgia facing the Auburn Tigers, the beleaguered Tigers. All kinds of turmoil in that program. That's at 7.30 Eastern tonight on ESPN. But coming up, Badger Tom Burke leading the nation with 17 sacks, hoping to secure a spot in the Rose Bowl. That is coming up next. We welcome you back to the big house in Ann Arbor, nearing kickoff, Wisconsin and Michigan. Dave Ryan on the sidelines along with Michigan head coach Lloyd Carr. Coach, your team came out with such emotional intensity against Penn State last week, made a big difference. Can you match that level today? Well, we hope to match it. It's, uh, you know, you can't ask for any greater circumstances. It's a great November day and the championship's on the line. That's, uh, doesn't get any more exciting than that. Lloyd, so far, no one has been able to stop the great day. Ron Dane, eight straight 100-plus yard rushing days. Can you do it today? That's the goal. <laughs> Best of luck. Well, thank you. The guys upstairs. Well, a realistic Lloyd Carr set to do battle 
with Wisconsin on a perfect football day. Cool, overcast, not much of a breeze, really. There is a possibility of rain later today, but just perfect Big Ten football conditions. Barry Alvarez in his ninth year in Madison, 58 wins, eight wins each of the last two years, has taken the Badgers to three of their four career bowl victories. That's in 109 years. Obviously, they have already clinched a bid somewhere. They hope Pasadena, if not Tempe, still perhaps an outside chance, depending on what happens to the teams above them in the BCA, BCS rankings. 111,000 are here ready for this one. Last year when they played at Madison, Badgers gave the national champions to be about all they wanted before finally falling 26-16. Minus Ron Dane was out that day with an ankle injury. He's never faced Michigan. Here is what people continue to hang on Wisconsin. They've only played two teams that have winning records and San Diego State just got above 500. Purdue is the only other one, Bill above the break-even mark this year. That's right, and the players have taken the right approach as well as the coaches and saying there's nothing we can do about that. All we can go do is go out and play the next one, and they are so physical and so intimidating, they've been able to grind everybody into dust. This will be their biggest challenge by far. And I might add that Michigan coaches are open about the fact that Wisconsin is the best team they've seen so far. Wolverines have won the toss, they defer. Wisconsin receives the kick by Hayden Epstein. We're underway in Ann Arbor. Nick Davis is halfway deep in the end zone. Badgers will start from their 20. And the Wisconsin offense can run it better than anybody in the Big Ten with Ron Dane, fourth all-time in Big Ten rushing, over 1,100 yards already this year. Chris Chambers, their top target when they go deep. He's usually the man they look for. 21 catches, 18 and a half yards, five for touchdowns this year. The huge offensive line, the Wisconsin trademark, headed by Aaron Gibson, a finalist for both the Outland Trophy and the Lombardi Award. The first Badger ever up for the Lombardi in the final four. They start with both wideouts right side and in the eye formation. In motion goes the fullback, Cecil Martin. Option right off the top for Mike Samuel, and he's nailed by Sam Sword after a gain of maybe two. The Michigan defense so improved from the disastrous start against Notre Dame and Syracuse. Rob Reed has figures to get a lot of business today, trying to plug up the middle where Ron Dane likes to establish himself early and often. James Hall, co-Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for his heroics against Penn State last week, blocked to kick. Forced to fumble on a sack, and in the defensive backfield, Tommy Hendricks also called on today for a lot of run support. That's strong safety. Samuel with time and incomplete and intercepted through the hands of Ahmad Merritt and right into the hands of Andre Weathers. Right off the bat, Wisconsin is taken out of its basic plan, which is to essentially never turn the ball over. A nice throw by Samuel. Merritt simply does not concentrate. You must look at the tip of the ball, especially when there's a lot of adrenaline flowing, and get it into your body. From the 25-yard line, Michigan takes over, and Clarence Williams off tackle for about a yard, hit by Donnell Thompson. The Michigan offense finally looking potent last week, and Clarence Williams was a big reason. 83 yards on 24 carries, ran with authority, especially up the middle. Ty Streets with 41 catches, 16 yards per catch, eight touchdowns, a major part of the Wisconsin defensive plan today. And Jeff Backus and John Jansen will both take turns trying to keep Tom Burke away from Tom Brady. Williams on the toss sweep is hit at the 21-yard line. The Wisconsin defense first nationally against the run. Tom Burke first nationally with 17 sacks and 25 tackles behind the line. Favre, Malik, and Kalaji also up front. Roger Knight has missed four games this year with a bad ankle. Chris Godorzi is out today. Pulled a hamstring in practice Wednesday. He is doubtful to see any action at all. 
And the Badger secondary featuring Jamar Fletcher, just a redshirt freshman, second in the country. Five interceptions, two of which he has returned for scores. And this flag is going to be a procedure walk-off against Michigan, I believe. Fire to the snap. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. The gun remains third. Well, both teams with all early year, mistakes. Yeah, all year long, David. This has been Michigan's history, and it's not the young guys. This is this is a veteran offensive line. It's almost uncanny. When they get themselves in a good position, good field position, they make a blunder like that. Those are drive killers. Right back where they took the interception from the 25. Brady steps up, sees a little room, keeps for only about three. And the Michigan field goal unit and Jay Feely will have to come on and try and get some points off the uh, gift turned over to the offense by Andre Weathers. And the Michigan coaches are sick right now. When you get a turnover early in the game, you can drive a stake in the heart of an opponent in a situation like this by jumping them early. It's a fake snap to Feely, who will be buried at the 20. Fake field goal does not work for Michigan. Jason Doring reading it alertly up to stop Jay Feely. This kind of play at this stage in the game makes a statement to both teams. It says to Wisconsin, we're not sure that we're going to be able to score enough points by starting with a three-pointer to stay with you. What it says to the Michigan team is, we're not sure about ourselves. And I'm positive that Coach Carr would love to have that call back and take that three points. He's got a fairly reliable field goal kicker. Who had the wind at his back on what would have been a 38-yarder. Very makeable. Fake doesn't work. Ron Dane gouges forward about a yard and a half up the middle into the arms of Ian Gold. And if Sam Sword is, in fact, the broad sword of the Michigan defense, then Ian Gold is the stiletto. He can fly. He can hit. The last time we were here, the most recent game that we had here as a crew day, that, that guy had 18 hits. He is all over the field. He missed a lot of time with an ankle. He's come back and has been their leading tackler in all but one game since his return. Samuel underthrows a wide open Chris Chambers. He was hurried by Guess who? Ian Gold. Offensive coaches pull their hair out. Brad Childress, who doesn't have a great deal of hair, is going to pull out what he has because you scheme these things for weeks and weeks. And then the quarterback doesn't get the ball to the receiver. Yes, he was pressured, but Samuel had plenty of time to step up. That's a throw he would normally make, and it's a touchdown if he hits Chris Chambers, who has outstanding speed. Samuel under a lot of pressure, a lot of heat this week. He's got a lot on his mind. Most would say better runner than passer. Time over the middle for Eddie Faulkner, who will have a Badger first down to the 32. A gain of 10 for Faulkner, the backup tailback behind Day. Now, as strange as this may sound, I think that was a big play. To come up third and down, having just blown an easy touchdown, and get a nice little check through, a little A delay, the A back being the tailback. Coming off, there's Brad Childress right there, doing a good job. Nice play call to get the first down. I think that was very important for early morale for Wisconsin. Motion from Chambers. Dane on the draw, out of the eye. Quick reacting James Hall hit him low, dragged him down. Northwestern and Penn State have kicked off. Let's see here from Larry B. All right, Dave, first series for Northwestern, Gavin Hoffman, little screen pass, middle screen to Dwayne Bates, and look at what he can do when he gets the ball. Weaving his way, but gets caught, and Northwestern only able to get a field goal out of this, three to nothing, that came on the deuce. Well, we wonder how Penn State reacts to being shut out last week, and how Michigan reacts to that masterpiece. Martin with the swing pass crunched at the 40-yard line. Ian Gold with another hit, joined by Sam Sword and Tommy Hendricks. 
Beautifully executed, a play that we have not seen in the times that we've studied the Badgers, and we've seen five or six tapes on them. So this is something that the staff has put in. Brad Childress getting the ball to his fullback, Cecil Martin, who does a nice job behind good blocking. Casey Robach, the center, number 70, and the right guard, Dave Costa, number 54, out in front. And we got a third and short. Again from the I-10, and plenty of room for the first down of the 44-yard line. Where James Whitley, 190-pound corner, felt the full brunt of the 253-pound day. This offensive line is put together with short yardage in mind. Take a look. Bill Ferrario, McIntosh, fan blocking or turning to the outside, opening up a nice inside lane for Ron Dane. Some good footwork by the big man to drive for the first down. Out of two types this time, Dane. Similar size hole up the middle. Two, maybe three. Wisconsin, though, unlike most offenses, not discouraged when they only get two or three on first down. Wisconsin is perfectly satisfied to come out and pound you for a while and then punt the football and play defense field position. That's why I thought it was so critical that they made the early mistake and gave Michigan the ball with good field position. When Michigan didn't capitalize, they go right back to their plan and they want to grind you into submission. Unbalanced formation, two big guys to the left. Samuel rolling that way with some room. He'll keep it. Sam Sword knocks it loose after he had already stepped out of bounds. And it looked like about a foot or two shy of the first down marker. Aaron Gibson, number 79, who used to be a tight end, goes over and lines up next to the captain, Chris McIntosh. you got 700 pounds of humanity right there. They sprint in that direction with a little boot with the guard leading. Nobody open. Samuel turns it up for a good game. That's a fundamental part of Wisconsin's football. They'll go unbalanced in either direction. A tight end at 370 is a load out there, to say the least. On average, 52 rushes, only 16 passes per game for the Badgers. No subtlety, no trying to trick anybody. They just do what they do. And Barry Alvarez looking forward to a game of this magnitude says what are we going to do we're going to come out four wides no what got us here exactly what michigan's going to see <laughs> yeah but i asked brad childers i said what about your exotics but barry confesses that he might have an exotic or two he said we're going to throw some screens <laughs> and they've already used it yeah they already used them up martin in motion out wide dane heads that way joaquin fazell Got him low, as is the plan for just about anybody that has to tackle Ron Dane. Get him low, hope you get help. You got help from Sam Sword on the sideline, and another gain of three on first down for the Badgers. This is a stretch play, meaning to get the ball to your great tailback with a bunch of big guys in front of him and just let him stretch the defense. Fizell did a nice job of fighting to the outside, getting off the blocker, Chris McIntosh getting the big guy on the ground. Marcus Ray, who returned last week from the six-game suspension and of safety. A good reviews last week. Second and seven, Dane hit quickly by Tommy Hendricks. <laughs> Hendricks has taken Ray's job from a year ago, starting strong safety. Ray now the backup and free to Dwayne Patton. This is a safety blitz. Tommy Hendricks coming off the corner. There's no blocker for him. He's the man who is unaccounted for. He sneaked up, timed it properly, made a good hit in the backfield. Tommy was excited about this game. We spoke with him yesterday. He said, this is why you come to Michigan, to play in these games. Badgers were up against the play clock. And before it could expire, they get a timeout. 6.49 to go. Scoreless first quarter in Ann Arbor. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. 
and by MCI Five Cent Sunday. They least on the day you call the most. Six forty-nine, first quarter, and the Badgers, after using their timeout, now ready on third and seven. At the 48, very, very questionable footing down there today, as you would expect this late in the year. Dave, this is not a good football field for footing any time of the year. This thing is coming up in chunks. All he's trying to do is get inside his blocker, Bill Ferrario, number 60, who's out to block on Hall, number 56. His feet go out from under him. Kevin Stemke, who last week killed a 62-yarder at the one, and is uh, one of the biggest weapons that Michigan is wary of in this matchup. That one dies at the 12 after 39 yards, 6-11 to go in the first, and Michigan takes over when we come back to the big house. All year long, the Badgers are so adept at playing the field position game, and Michigan takes over 63 yards worse off than where they got it after the weather's interception, which led to no points. Open over the middle, Mark Campbell, tight end, big yardage to the 37. A 25-yard catch and run by Campbell. And it's the old Brian Greasy, Jeremy Tooman play, the boot with the... The naked boot, here comes Brady, Tooman's covered. Campbell from the backside tight end. Chris Doring slips and falls to free safety. Nice job. Good execution. Looks like Michigan of a year ago. Jason Doring slipped. Probably added 10 yards at least to that game by Campbell. Williams, nice hole, slicing off right tackle to the 45. A pickup of about eight. Mike Eccles, a little 170-pound redshirt freshman corner, made the hit there. Clarence Williams, much of his senior year, Bill, kind of a forgotten man. He had Early fumble problems, consecutive games against Iowa and Northwestern, but back in the good graces after last week. Very good graces. Coach Carr is proud of him. He even coughed it up last week once on a contact hit, but was put back in the game and really gave Michigan a spark. He's replaced by Anthony Thomas for the second and one. Brady hanging one deep for Marcus Knight, which is overthrown. And Knight covered terrifically by Eccles. Mike Eccles, number 36. Jamar Fletcher, number two. Two very unusual redshirt freshmen in man coverage here. And you're going to see this several times today from Michigan. They're going to put this ball up. They've got fine receivers. That's the way you cover. He's got him on the inside hip. They both go for the ball. Good defense by Eccles there. The fastest man on the Wisconsin squad. Third and one, easily enough for the first down, Clarence Williams up to midfield. Well, let's look at the remainder of our Saturday game schedule. 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific on ESPN2. Fifth-ranked Florida State on the road at Wake Forest with new quarterback Marcus Outson now at the helm. 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Action from the SEC is Quincy Carter and Champ Bailey lead number 18 Georgia into Jordan here to take on Auburn. And then back on the deuce at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, number 12 Virginia Tech traveling to Syracuse against the number 25 Orangeman later today on ESPN and ESPN2. Brady off of play fake. Just off the left hand of Jeremy Tooman. So Brady looking early for both his tight ends. Tooman and Campbell getting early shots. I really think that people have reminded, I mean, people who understand football have reminded the Michigan coaches of just how much success they had with their bootleg game a year ago. Brian Greasy had a great touch for that throw. Brady is not quite as adept as Greasy, but they're going to probably do it now until he gets good at it. Marcus Knight in motion. Williams. High step for about three up the middle. The thing that really jumped out about Brady's performance last week against the Nittany Lions, he had 17 completions to 10 different targets. He really spread it out. Yeah, that's not something, even on their good days, that Michigan has done either last year or this year. It makes it so much more difficult to design a defense for them. Here's Mike DeBoer, 
the offensive coordinator. He hadn't gotten any dumber since a year ago. People think coaches lose their wits. Four wides. Third and seven, Brady again. Time incomplete. That one intended for Ty Street. Michigan screaming for a flag on contact. Could have been Fletcher, could have been Doring. They were pointing to there is no flag. Ty Streets has a tough time just getting off the line of scrimmage with this footing. The footing is simply not holding up. He, then he slips and falls when he tries to make his cut. Yeah, they'd like a flag. They need to throw, throw a flag on the grass. So the punt by Jason Vincent. Tim Rosga lets it go into the end zone. And it is 47 yards for Vincent. 349 first quarter. Badgers nothing, Wolverines nothing. Welcome back to Michigan Stadium. Footing will be a problem today. Even though we haven't had rain here in Ann Arbor, the grass is really giving way to the players. During timeouts, a divot crew is going out, fixing all the chunks that have been thrown up by the players out there. In warm-ups, we saw several Wolverines go down. Kicker Jay Feely actually let his feet go out from under him while practicing a field goal. Guy, the coaches told me before the game they were concerned. This is a battle of the trenches. The field getting chewed up. Already affected a handful of plays, and we're still first quarter. Samuel with time to go deep, looking for Chambers open, got it! Chased by William Peterson, who can't catch it. Touchdown, Chambers, 80 yards. The play action off the option was there on the previous series. Good play calling, coming right back to it, and it was there again. We asked the Michigan safeties, will you be able to recognize the difference between the true option and the option pass? He starts out as if to run the option. The safeties fight on it and come up. Chambers gets behind him and wins the foot race to the end zone. Great execution, and this time Samuel was on the money. So Matt Davenport for the... Wisconsin extra point and a seven to nothing Badger lead. Roscoe with the hole. The kick is good. Both these coaching staffs are extremely confident about their ability and the ability of their team to win this game. But both of them confess that they would really love to jump out and get a quick lead. All 22 players in this shot. Watch the safeties fight. They freeze just long enough right there. Here comes Chambers. He's going to run to the post, and he's going to be wide open. Beautiful execution. No deep safety. Going up to fill the option. Boy, Bill, for a guy that has uh, rarely been complimented for his passing compared to Joe Cap for most of his career, that would look more like Joe Namath. <laughs> Well, he had a couple of bad throws already, and his one good throw went through somebody's hands and became a, an interception. So, yeah, he just keeps coming at you. The thing about Samuel is he's, he's emblematic of this Wisconsin team. They're going to fight you, scrap you, bite you, hit you, anything they have to do, including throw long passes, and occasionally he's going to hit one. Sixth touchdown catch for Chris Chambers. Everybody else on the Badger offense combining for three. That shows how much of a favorite target he is of Samuel. And Vitaly Pasetsky, former member of the Russian national soccer team, by way of New York on for the kick for Wisconsin. And he aims for that angle, doesn't quite get it, and draws the flag. Northwestern and Penn State, an update from Larry Beal. Yeah, Kevin Thompson to Kuncho Brown here as Penn State tries to come up with some offense. They've been looking for it all season long. Nice spin move to break away from a tackler. We'll take it inside the 10 to set up a short touchdown run. Penn State moves in front 7-3 to three on the Wildcats. Penn State last week shut out for the first time in 11 years. But no shutout for the Michigan defense today. They start from the 35, trailing 7 to nothing. The 
just over three and a half minutes to go first quarter. Williams tries the middle again. He's had some success. Not this time. Ross Kalaji, the 275-pound sophomore from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, was there. Ross Kalaji, one of the many, many Wisconsin natives on this University of Wisconsin squad, beats the double team. That's inexcusable. The two offensive linemen get whipped and split right here. Welcome to Wisconsin football. Teeth, hair, eyeballs all over the field. All day long. That's how they play. Oh, none of that comes from Dave Ryan. <laughs> Williams sweeping right. They'll mark him at the 44, where Roger Knight chased him out. Roger Knight returning as a starter, began the year as a starter, got hurt in the very first game. Chris Cadorzi has been brilliant in Knight's uh, recuperation period, but because of the hamstring he hurt Wednesday, we don't expect to see Cadorzi, the Badgers' leading tackler, by the way. Kevin Cosgrove will uh, thus plug in Knight, who he says is one of the best athletes at linebacker they've ever had there. Third and two. Williams, a nice cutback. And into Badger territory. Running the way he did last week. Ten yards he chops off there. Knight, Jason Doring with the tackle for the Badgers. Yeah, and a couple of people slipped and fell down on this play, but I'll tell you who didn't. Big John Jansen didn't right tackle 77. Excellent job. Look at him drive his man over on his back. And man, did Williams explode through that hole. This thing's getting ready to be real physical <laughs> all afternoon. So the Wolverines in Badger territory. Knight went in motion. And they keep trying to keep the hot hand hot. Two yards for Clarence Williams. Tom Burke leading the nation in sacks. First time, really, he uh, has his name called today. And both Jeff Backus and John Jansen are going to get to take turns on Tom Burke, who, who's probably had the best single season by any defensive player in the country this year. You could make that case. Well, he's the best defensive player we've seen. And he leads this football team with a passion that you just have to admire. It's great and fun to watch him play. Draw play, Anthony Thomas gives it on a reverse to David Terrell. Terrell pulled out a big shy of the first down at the 39-yard line. John Fabre holding his position on that right defensive end with the hit. Burke allowed inside. Then Tuman. No, he just missed the play. That's a rare occasion. Tom Burke had an opportunity to make that play behind the line of scrimmage and for once did not move his feet. Normally he moves his feet and gets into things, but Terrell just ran right by him. Not one of his better plays. Boy, it was close. It was down by about half a foot. So Brady will look at third and inches. Based on what they did on their first series, opting for a fake field goal, passing up what would have been a 38-yard Jay Feely attempt with the wind at his back, you would uh, presume that Boyd Carr figures this to be four down territory. You know, I, I, I said he has a fairly reliable kicker. They're 12 out of 18 on the year. That's not a great percentage. And when you're out there in that region, uh, it might not be a bad idea to try a fake if you've got something that really will work. Did not appear to have much hope. Well, Brady will get it on a sneak. Plenty big enough to take that pounding up front at 6'5 and 213. What a year of steady improvement for Tom Brady, the junior from San Mateo, California. Hasn't drawn a whole lot of notice. Third in the Big Ten in the passing ratings this week. Lloyd Carr pointing out yesterday how rare it is when you think about it, for a first-year starter and quarterback to lead a team to a championship. But that is a definite possibility this year for Brady. If he wins today and wins next week at Columbus. Brady with time. Aaron Shea inside the 10 first and goal. Third-yarder 
for Shea, who had a big touchdown last week to get the Wolverines started. Aaron Shea, number 36, one of the most versatile players on the team, has lined up at tight end, then full back. Coming out of the backfield, splitting the seam of the zone right down the middle. Good concentration, got his team inside the 10. He's limped off since then, Evan Coleman at his fullback. Williams ran out of room trying to make a move around that left corner. Dan Lasowski, backup outside linebacker, met him there. He is most of the time playing behind Bob Adamon. Redshirt freshman. Yeah, and Bob Adamoff, number 29, is defensive captain, and he's one of the former walk-ons. This defense has four former walk-ons that start. Donnell Thompson, Jason Doring, Eric Mollick, defensive tackle. All those guys showed up at Wisconsin as walk-ons. Think about that. It, that is incredible for the number four overall defense in the country, starting four guys who didn't have scholarships when they arrived at Madison. Brady pumping once to the back of the end zone leaping catch by Jeremy Tuman. Beautiful job by the men up front. This is what pass protection is all about. Brady has plenty of time to stand, watch, wait, pump, and then find Tuman, who makes a good concentration catch in the back of the end zone. Tied up on Keeley's extra point, 7-7. Seven to seven. Tuman, with just his second touchdown catch this year for the All-America out of Louisville, Kansas. Watch the young junior poise in the pocket over the outstretched hands of the linebackers and into the hands of his tight end, Jeremy Tuman. You've got to like what Burke's becoming in this offense. And we're all tied up. Tom Brady. You know, this is like two great heavyweights body punching in the early round, trying to just wear each other down. Boom, boom, boom. See who can last through the fourth quarter and still standing at the end. Great football, great Big Ten football. Michigan answers the Badger 80-yard lightning strike with that methodical drive ending in the arms of Tuman. This took Brady a while, a long while this year to get that affinity for his tight ends that Brian Greasy grew to have, especially with two. Well, I think he liked him just fine. He just didn't throw the ball to him. <laughs> Walker, Davis, waiting for Epstein's kick. And I'd like the opening kickoff, not returnable. And with that, we end the first quarter in Ann Arbor before 111,000 or so. Jeremy Tuman has forged a tie for Michigan with its seven-game win streak and hopes of a return to Pasadena on the line. Second quarter down from Ann Arbor, 7-7 tie. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan. As the Badgers start from their 20, Chambers one in motion. Ron Dang, maybe one. Ian Gold on the tackle for Michigan. Well, Mike Samuel making headlines he did not want after last week's victory over Minnesota. Involved in uh, a fracas outside a night spot near the campus there in Madison, charged with misdemeanor battery. Barry Alvarez immediately uh, looked into it, and uh, he got some witnesses to corroborate Samuel's story that he was trying to break up a fight involving his brother, not a student, and uh, another patron. And so from the get-go, he said Samuel would start, would play the entire game. He is hit for a loss at the 18 here as Sam Sword chases him down. I think the key right here to that whole situation, David, is 
Mike Samuel's mental state. It seemed to me he was awfully tight in the beginning, and his coaches have confessed that he's the sort of a guy who just is so conscientious and worries about everything, which is one of the reasons he's a great competitor. He came out here, got himself loosened up after a while, made a couple of great throws, and just took a heck of a shot from Big Sam Sword, but a lot of people take shots from Sam. On third and 11, Nick Davis in as a third wideout. Samuel Waits sets up the screen for Dane. Got away from Dehany Jones, continues forward. Not enough for the first down at the 28. William Peterson stayed after him, finally wrestled him down there. I have referred to Ron Dane as a pile driver and a ball peen hammer, but well, here's Ron Dane, the athlete. Watch the nimble feet. This is not just a big old clumsy guy. This guy's athletic. Look at him move. Look at him bounce. Almost made the first down virtually on his own. We're three out. Kevin Stenke. Wind that is back here in the second quarter. Marcus Knight from the 29. He got a couple extra yards after breaking a tackle. 43-yard punt by Stemke returned to six by night. 12.45 in the second quarter in a 7-7 tie in Michigan. ESPN presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by Dell. Direct computer solutions for business at home and around the world. Be direct. Dell. And by the new 1999 TL, luxury performance, pick two. Michigan hoping to add 98 to that list of champions. It ended up in Pasadena, 7-7, 12-45 in the second quarter as Brady and company take over at their 35. Anthony Thomas is the tailback. Throw it out for Ty Streets. Loosely covered by Jamar Fletcher, but he comes up and corrals him at the 41. In the first quarter, Bill already wants that out the window, and that is the one where the Badgers had held their last three opponents all under 30 rushing yards. Michigan with 55, and of the 99 passing yards by the Badgers, 80 on the one play, the touchdown to Chambers. Uncharacteristic stats for the Badgers on both sides of the ball. Here is Anthony Thomas, huge hole. Only Doring can get him. He doesn't get it. Touchdown, Anthony Thomas, 59 yards. development. It's a big play offensive day so far. The last thing anybody expected. Jay Feely makes it 14-7. Anthony Thomas with his seventh touchdown run of the year. Bursting off tackle 59 yards all the way to a Michigan lead. Wolverines on top, surprisingly not the longest run of the year by Thomas, who had a 69-yarder earlier, 59 here, untouched until Jason Doring's unsuccessful desperation dive, and it is 14 to 7. Short high kick by Epstein, Davis from the 10. Spun down rudely at the 24. Anthony Jordan with the first hit, the big hit, against Davis. How was it so easy here for Thomas? It's no mystery as to how these things happen. The right guard, Steve Frazier, will pull in this direction, and he will execute what we call a log block on the outside man who's flying to the inside. He bounces him onto the ground. Shea falls down, so the lead blocker was eliminated, but Thomas didn't need him, and he took it to the house.
Stewart wanted to come on a blitz. Samuel option it. There's no pitch man over there. He's helpless into the arms of Andre Weathers. It could have been worse. He could have pitched it. Yeah, he could. I've seen that happen. But on this play, a very rare mistake by Ron Dane, who goes the wrong way on the option. The option's clearly called in this direction. It's possible that there was an audible call and that Dane couldn't hear it because of the crowd noise. One of Barry Alvarez's biggest weapons, one of the biggest fears by Michigan, that option ability. That almost turned into a real disaster, as it is a loss of two. Samuel hit before he can swing it out. Ian Gold has the sack. Jim Herman says Ian Gold is so competitive, he tries to win at winter weightlifting. It doesn't matter what you're doing, he wants to be better than you at it, and that's the secret of his outstanding play as an undersized 213-pound inside linebacker. When he plays the way he does, there's nothing wrong with his size. He has such agility and such speed. And as Coach Herman said, he's the most competitive guy on the football team. He happens to be the fastest man on the entire defensive unit, including the DBs. Shotgun, quarterback draw, Samuel. And he's got room, and he has a Wisconsin first down to the 40. And every time, every time you count Mike Samuel out, every time you say Wisconsin can't possibly recover from this emotion, watch this guy trip, stumble, fall. Nothing poetic, nothing lovely about this. No, he doesn't look like Anthony Thomas when he runs. He just looks like a first down, that's all. <laughs> Amazing. He reminds me so much of my old teammate, Billy Lothridge, who was a great player at Georgia Tech in the early 60s. He stumbled for more 20-yard games than anybody you ever saw. Now back to Dane, and he cuts back for four yards. Coming back, not his uh, fastball, but he is nimble enough to do so. James Hall, Sam Sword, Josh Williams, all on the combined tackle. And they look at second and six. But that was not his fastball. It was his slider. Cut you... fastball, maybe. Cut fastball. Yeah. I like that. Because he usually doesn't have to cut. He just he <laughs> runs right over you and leaves his, his tire tracks yeah. on your face. Yeah. Come on, Merritt goes in motion. Eddie Faulkner in to give Dane a play off. And a pileup at the 45. Coming up at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC today. Headlining regional coverage, co-number one Kansas State looks to snap the jinx against number 11 Nebraska. From here in the Big Ten, number seven Ohio State travels to Iowa. Number three UCLA travels to Washington in a huge game for the Bruins and their national title aspirations. And North Carolina tackles number 22 Virginia in action from the ACC. Check your local listings for the game in your area or get the ESPN game plan and you can have access to all four. Three wideouts, right side for Samuel on third and five. Out of the shotgun, incomplete, huge hit delivered by Hendricks against Dick Davis. Yeah, I guarantee you Mike Samuel's really happy that Tommy Hendricks didn't see that football throw because had he seen it, he would have just plucked it and gone the other way. That was a very poor decision by Mike, throwing that ball into coverage. Hendricks had it covered all the way. Stemke now with the win. Great opportunity to use his uh, strong leg and keep the Wolverines deep. And he lost this one up, nose up, chased by Knight. The out-of-bounds hop came at the 16. 39-yarder by Stemke. 14-7, Michigan. Wisconsin had this crowd quiet, had Michigan back on its heels after the 80-yard bomb by uh, Samuel to Chambers. Wolverines have shaken that off and come back with a two-man touchdown catch and a 59-yard run by an almost untouched Anthony Thomas. That coming against a defense that had not given up a run longer than 26 yards all year. 
another one of those mind-boggling stats rung up by the Wisconsin defense that are one by one falling today. Five yards for Williams. Purdue is underway and an update from Larry B. Yeah, Dave, against Michigan State. Michigan State coming off the upset of Ohio State. Bill Burke slings it inside arm to Gary Scott and the Spartans with a 7-3 lead over Purdue. Second out at five from their own 21. Michigan offensive line winning that battle so far against the Badger defensive line. Williams trying the left corner and run down out of bounds by Bob Adamoff, the outside backer. Bob Adamoff is stopped. And the numbers are indeed glittering for the Badgers. Top rush defense in the country coming in has already given up about twice what they have averaged per game. And that is with half of the second quarter still to go. Yeah, well, they caught about twice of those winged headgears in the mouth of what they're used to. Those big guys up front from Michigan are coming off the football. O-line coaches love to talk about coming off. Well, that's what Michigan's O-line's doing. They're doing well running inside. Shotgun and four wides on third down. Brady again with time for streets. Incomplete and almost intercepted by Leonard Taylor. They have three white jerseys around Ty Streets. Fletcher with primary coverage. Fourth down, Vincent on the punt. I'll tell you what I see here. John Unitas and Raymond Berry are probably the most famous for having an almost mystical connection. This is a nice throw and almost a great catch. Doris prevented the catch. Almost a block punt by the Badgers. It is a not too decent effort because of the pressure that came from Tim Rosga, who has blocked three kicks in his career two this year. And Rosga made a big mistake right there. The best way to block a kick is to stay on your feet, run through the ball, and take it off the punter's feet with your hands. Tim dove that time, which is not the way he normally does it. He went across the ball. He literally dove across the ball, and he knows it right now. All he had to do was come under control, take it off his foot. He was there. Well, he forced just a 33-yarder by Vincent. Great shape for the Wisconsin offense. Dane tried to bounce it outside, keeps his footing. Not an easy pass today, and he reaches midfield. Once again, the athleticism of Ron Dane. There are very few people that are 5'10", 253 pounds, that can run that fast, cut on a bad field, and then accelerate, put his hand down, and end up second and four. <laughs> Both these teams are blocking the defenses in ways that they're not accustomed to being blocked. Five yards almost per carry for the year for Dane. Not even half that so far. Gold and sword. Already big forces against the run. They got him at the 49. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, guys, Michigan defensive coordinator Jim Herman says the Wolverines want to hit Ron Dane as early as possible on his runs, preferably two or three tacklers getting involved. Wolverine defenders want to make Dane restart his runs to hold him up and disrupt his rhythm. The last thing they want to see, guys, is Ron Dane running downhill, 260 pounds of momentum behind him. They want to try to keep him off balance, guys. And so far, so good. Samuel again buried with Dane not there to take a pitch. James Whitley coming all the way that time from cornerback. There is an incredible lack of communication between the two dominant backfield players for the University of Wisconsin. Nobody seems to be able to understand it. That play was called in the huddle. There's no excuse. Somebody blew it. Somebody didn't communicate. It's impossible to tell from up here whose responsibility it is. So they do nothing with that field position. That's quite yet probably by Stemke. Hasn't given Marcus Knight anything to return, and they are inside their 11. 42-yarder, 4.56 to go in the first half. Did you ever see Cool Hand Luke? That's uh, classic line. What we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that in 30 years, but you are right. 
Just as we can tell, that is again on Ron Dane. Second time he's gone the wrong way on an option. So Tom Brady going to work. He hits tonight. Hit immediately. And hard by Jamar Fletcher. Of such as this are ulcers made in coaches' stomachs. Wisconsin's got the play. James Hall lined up here, and Whitley's outside him. They're going to both come down the line of scrimmage and attack the quarterback, which is a mistake. If there's a pitch back, look where the play's going to go. Big Grams has got him locked up down the field. It's a long game for Wisconsin that went by the boards. Anthony Thomas buried at the 18. South Carolina and Florida are underway. Larry Beal, an update. All right, Dave, you know, the Gators still hanging around with national title hopes. Against South Carolina here, Doug Johnson with a flip out to Aaron Kinney, untouched into the end zone. Gators take a 10-0 lead. First quarter winding down there. Now, could it be that we'll have a Florida-Tennessee rematch in Tempe? It's not impossible. Gators trying to do their part to get there. On third and three, they will probably be close enough for a measurement on the straight-ahead run by Thomas. Yeah, and after what I thought was a weak statement by the coaching staff with the fake field goal early, some very strong statements have been made repeatedly here. Third and three is normally an option or a passing down. They just line up and hand it to the tailback and see if they can knock them off the ball against the number one run defense in America. And they did. Ross Kalaji, who did such a good job of splitting the double team previously, this time gets Frazier and Brandt, gets stood up, gets knocked back. That's not good short yardage defense. The offense won the battle. As they have most of this first half. Thomas again through the middle, squeezes about seven yards out into the arms of Mike Eccles. Kalaji also had uh, some contact there against Anthony Thomas and uh, Michigan again mixing Williams and Thomas very effectively at tailback. They're mixing Williams and Thomas, but I'll tell you who deserves a lion's share of the credit, or I should say a Wolverine share, is Aaron Shea, number 36. One fine blocker, fine receiver, good special teams player. What a football player, number 36, Aaron Shea. And the offset eye, they need three on second down, and they again give it to Thomas. Strong enough to get another yard after contact came by Donnell Thompson, the middle linebacker. We talked about old-fashioned Big Ten football as we prepared for this game. Well, so did the coaching staffs of these two teams. I have not seen Wisconsin blocked like this by anybody. Here comes Aaron Shea, number 36. Thomas right behind him. Aaron did not get the job done there. Donnell Thompson makes the play and prevents the first down. So we got third and short. Grass and everybody's hat. This is football. Brady already successfully sneaking once for a first down, and he does so again here to the 32. Let's check in with Larry Beal for what's coming up at the half. All right, Dave, National Car Rental Halftime Report is coming up. Great day in college football. Six matchups involving top 25 teams facing each other. Missouri and A&M in one of those. Big Ten highlights. Plus the game day gang live in Manhattan, Kansas with a big showdown of the day. That's coming up at the half. Barry Alvarez. As Michigan calls timeout, all week had stressed to his guys, let's not make this game bigger than it is. Forget the helmets, forget the crowd. It's just another game that we need to win, as they have all year to date. This one in doubt, to say the least. Touchdown lead for Michigan. How surprised are you at the fact that so far the Wolverines are able to run and run with shocking ease comparatively when you look at what Wisconsin has allowed all season long. But what I'm surprised about is this offensive line hadn't played like this earlier. They are coming off that football. After a fake to Williams, Brady wanted to go deep for Marcus Knight, who is all alone. Adamoff 
drives him out at the 35-yard line. Knight, almost the forgotten man of the Michigan wideouts, hit for 32 yards. Knight, a brilliant young man, an engineering major from Sylacauga, Alabama. Alabama. This is real veteran presence by Brady. His tight end gets held up or knocked down. The normal receiver on this boot play, so he just looks deep. He's delighted to see that Marcus is wide open and makes a nice throw. Reese gets most of those deep balls, most of the touchdowns. Knight shoots in with a big gainer. Williams breaking the tackle, driven out by Doring at the 15. Pick up of 20. They're coming in huge chunks now against this Badger defense. Uncharacteristic missed tackle by Donnell Thompson, number 44. One of the outstanding linebackers and one of those former walk-ons gets to the outside, but Williams has got too much speed for him. What we're seeing here, the two heavyweight boxers, one of them's going to the head now, and he's trying to knock out the other one. Wisconsin is reeling, and Williams is rolling. Try him again. And this time, stuff for nothing. Donnell Thompson, Eric Mollick, limit him to no game. Michigan will use its second timeout with 136 in the half. I'll tell you what the Wolverines are doing, and I'm not sure they would have framed it this way in a staff meeting, but they've taken the Wisconsin game plan, and they've come out to the Badgers, and they've said, we are going to whoop you with your game plan and see how much you like it. And by golly, they're doing it. What's the psychological effect when that happens to a team? It is electric for both teams. It's like the plug has been pulled for you, and you wonder what's happening here. Well, what's happening is this. Jeff Backus, Steve Hutchinson, David Brandt, Steve Frazier, John Jensen, the offensive line for the Wolverines, I bet you they had a meeting last night and they said, look, we're going to take this thing over. That's exactly what they've done. They're just knocking people back. They could have done it all year. I think that's why Coach Carr's been a little upset with them. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave and Bill, Michigan senior captain John Jansen had a little discussion with running back Clarence Williams before the Penn State game last week, telling him, hey, we're seniors. This is the time to play the best game of our careers. After a gritty out against the Nittany Lions last week, many teammates told Clarence it was the best game he had played in his Michigan career. But Thursday at practice, Jansen spoke with Clarence again, saying he thinks Williams will play even better today, not to be satisfied with last week's game against Penn State. Dave and Bill. Prophetic statement. Take the pitch to Thomas. Brady basically dumped that one, a bounce pass intended for Tuman. John Favre coming with heat to force that uh, incompletion by Brady. It's third and ten. Another sign of maturity, no attempt to force the throw in. It's covered. Favre's coming. He's got you contained. You're not going to break containment. Get rid of the ball. Good job by Brady. Tom Brady, 20 pass attempts in his career coming into this year. Had an appendectomy last year. Forgotten man after deciding to Drew Henson. Improving every single week. Swing it out for Street. Breaks a tackle by Fletcher. And he should have the first down. He went right at the first down marker inside the five. And I think he got it. Well known that Ty Streets is a marvelous athlete. He simply plants, shows the eight and the six to his quarterback. Jamar Fletcher, the usually reliable tackler in the open field, leaves his feet, dives, and makes the error that cost him a big, big first down at the five. They mark it just inside the five. First and goal, Michigan can go into the halftime locker room on two touchdowns. With a dive for the pylon, and he got there. Touchdown number two today for Anthony Thomas. With a flag down. There's a marker back at the eight. It's coming back, holding Michigan. I haven't seen that formation since 1971 with the Baltimore Colts. We called it Hamburger. 
a huge unbalanced line. Here's the call. During the run, holy offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. Looked like they had about eight guys to the right of the offensive line. It wasn't really that many, David. Everybody on the line of scrimmage. The hold looks like it. Look at them across here now. That's a whole lot of big guys. Good job by Tuman. Here comes Shea, 36, blocking on Fletcher. It looks like maybe, maybe he got a hold of it. It's just hard to tell. Nonetheless, they're back almost to the 20-yard line. It's still goal to go. But they go from their 18 with a draw play for Thomas. And he'll get him about three. Coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report with Larry Beal. And among the stories he will be covering, big one of the Big 12, Missouri visiting Texas A&M. Highlights from elsewhere in the Big Ten. And he will hear from uh, the game day folks in Manhattan, Kansas. Chris, Kirk, and Lee. Where they await Nebraska, Kansas State. Second and goal from the 15. Thomas again. Jay out with two blocks to set up another touchdown run by Anthony Thomas. He ought to go right over and shake Aaron Shea's hand. back made that easy almost a walk-in for Thomas Feely with the extra point okay watch the guard pull again these are the unsung heroes who get out Aaron Shea we've already talked about coming across from the fullback position right there on Donnell Thompson Good gracious, he knocked three of them down like bowling pins. Watch Big Aaron. Well, he turns it up out of the picture. All we'll see is the hero who runs in the end zone. We don't get to see the other hero who knocks down three defenders. Yep. See how smart Mike just got? Wisconsin obviously in trouble on the ropes, being body punched, head punched almost taken out of this game in the first half by their own devices. These are the very intimidating rundown tactics they've used on everybody else in Michigan turning the table. A very Badger-like scoring drive turned in by the Wolverines. 13 plays, 89 yards over four minutes. Thomas scored twice, second one counted. Well, they fight off a 13-yard holding penalty after first and goal inside the five. They score after first and goal at the 18. Feely drives this kick low to Faulkner, who brings it out to the 35 with 43 seconds. Coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, ESPN presents primetime college football, a number 18 Georgia, led by one of the top freshmen in the country, quarterback Quincy Carter and two-way superstar Champ Bailey travel to Jordan-Hare Stadium to take on Auburn tonight on ESPN, your Saturday showcase for the best in college football. Quickly down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave and Bill, great play in blocking from Aaron Shea, considering especially he's suffering a very painful hip point in his right hip. He's back in the lineup and doing well, but Paul Schmidt, the trainer, had to add quite a bit of padding to his right hip. He's playing great, though, even with that, guys. That happened on the catch he made to get him set up for uh, the early touchdown throw to Tillman. Here's Samuel chased out, and he stops the clock at 35 seconds. And what do you see on the Michigan sideline? Big John Jansen, number 77, the offensive captain, encouraging the defense. They've got that synergy going now. They're the defending national champs, and they're playing just like that. Well, I guess if, if every coach could figure out what button to push, be an easy job. The boy car searched for it and searched for it all year, finally found it last week. Well, that's why it's so hard to repeat. The guys get distracted by the championship stuff. Incomplete low for Faulkner and Samuel. 
has never looked like himself. Again, what Michigan's done is quickly shifted to the second season, the Big Ten Championship. Everybody in the Big Ten, there's Big John. Everybody in the Big Ten says that's the most important thing anyhow. Every kid that grows up in the Midwest wants to play in the Rose Bowl. So that's what they're fighting for now. Heaven knows they found the key to their emotional button. And you couldn't be more discouraged than they were after getting blown away by Notre Dame and Syracuse in those first two games. What a recovery. Ron Dane, not a big factor at all in this first half. On his 11th carry, eight yards to give him 31 for the half with 24 seconds. And Michigan wants it back. They used their last time out. Not a big factor unless you consider the fact that he went the wrong way on two options, each of which could have been a big play for Wisconsin. So I'm afraid Ron has been a big factor in a most negative way for his team. After the second time he went the wrong way on the option, he had a dazed look on his face, didn't he? Probably still there. Michigan State trying to come off their huge win last week. Larry Beal. Hey, Dave. Facing Purdue here and Bill Burke. This is not what he expects. Screen look at the out. big guy, Matt Mitrione, getting a little cutback. Feels like he's a tailback. 19 yards, interception return for a touchdown. Boilers leading 10-7. You know what, I'd be scared to score a touchdown. I never did in my career. But if you score a touchdown now, you can get hurt by your team. <laughs> golly, that guy leaked in his face. That's why you didn't. You just didn't want to be under a pile That's like that. That's the right? reason. That's the only reason that I never scored a touchdown. Also, the fact that I was an offensive center. Well, that one, uh, you had Lansing so big for both their bowl hopes, both the Boilermakers and the Spartans. This Dempsey really nails this one. Wow, what a punt into the end zone. 59 yarder. Second longest of the season for Kevin Stemke. And the Wolverines will take over with no timeouts and only 17 seconds. And the great field position that Wisconsin, Wisconsin has enjoyed, and we mentioned in the open that they, they're accustomed to starting at their 39 and starting the opponents at their 25, that really goes out the window if you can't stop the running game. And you see Coach Alvarez with those deep furrows in his brow, it's a, it's a terrible feeling when the other team just ramming it down your throat. That's what's happened in the first half. Brady will get this first half over with. But what a half it was for Michigan. Hoping for their eighth consecutive win to set them up for a return to Pasadena if they could handle the trip to Columbus next week. Wisconsin, if they come from behind and win today, will be in Pasadena, if not Tempe. But they've got loads to fix in their halftime locker room because it is Michigan dominating so far. 21-7 over the Badgers as we send you back to Larry Beal. What figured to be a real close game is anything but as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Michigan 21-7 over undefeated sixth ranked Wisconsin as we welcome you back to Ann Arbor. I guess anybody that didn't see the Michigan team that Penn State saw last week has got to be stunned by this. Oh, I would think so. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I, I, I'm surprised. I can't say it any other way. They're whipping them like tied up goats right now. Uh, I'm sure Wisconsin is resilient. They'll come back. But the offensive line for Michigan has been dominant, opening big holes for Clarence Williams. Anthony Thomas right here. Steve Frazier had a big block there. Aaron Shea here, the fullback, knocks down three Wolver or rather three Badgers to escort the ball carrier back into the end zone. And so we end up with 21 to seven, but more importantly, they've got Wisconsin on the run and Wisconsin is not accustomed to this. And they'll have to, they'll have to dig deep to come back here in the second half. And Justin Fargus is back awaiting the second half kickoff by Vitaly Pesetsky. Which will be returned mistakenly so from three yards deep freshman error by 
Justin Fargus. And look at these halftime numbers, especially that one compared to that one. Now, this is the number one run defense in the country, averaging, allowing 63 yards per game, giving up 173 already. They averaged 249 total yards allowed per game. Look at that number already for Michigan. They're just being blocked, Dave. They're just being beaten up front. That's where football's played. Clarence Williams, who had 66 first half yards on 14 carries. The Detroit senior starts the second half. Ross Kalaji makes the tackle after a short game. Further bad news for Wisconsin. The Michigan defense in Big Ten Conference play has allowed all of three points in all the second halves combined. And they scored six on three safeties. The defense has. The defense they scored everybody's offense. Brady with a swing to a wide open Williams. Cut down by Jamar Fletcher. Not before 18 yards, and Michigan is out of the shadow of their own goalpost, and we go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, the last thing you have to worry about with Michigan is being overconfident after leading by 14 at the half. A few moments ago, all the players ran by me in the tunnel here in Ann Arbor. They shouted blue. It's a 0-0 game. That means they're treating it like the game is tied, as if they don't have the two-touchdown lead. Also, Lloyd Carr told me emotion. The intensity was great in the first half. He wants to see even more in half number two, and he feels they'll be okay, guys. Another short first down carry by Williams. Other big factors we haven't talked about much, Dave. The pass protection for Brady has been superb on the swing pattern. Jamar Fletcher fell down, number two, trying to change directions. We showed him changing directions in the pregame. When he tried to change on this field, he slipped and fell. Clarence Williams ran for the first down. Nick Bryson getting some duty today with the man he backs up, Chris Gadorzy out with a hamstring. Through freshman, thrown into the fire. Ty Streets. Another Wolverine first out of the 37-yard line where he's hit by Fletcher after a pickup of 10. And they're picking on Jamar Fletcher. Or so it would appear. They've taken their big-time player and put him out against Wisconsin's big-time player and said, what are you going to do about it? There's a flag on the play. It's a good job by Burke to beat the blocker. We'll get the call here from the official on what it is. Excellent throw and catch. Good poise by Brady in the pocket. He seems to like the call. It must be a late hit on the quarterback. David Whitvoke. First of all, Face the face mask on the defense. 15-yard foul from the end of the run. First down. So not only do they get the yardage from the foul from the point of the infraction, they get it from the end of the play because it is a personal foul category. Huge field position shift. Tom Burke beats his man. Jansen immediately gets inside. He's going at Brady. We're going to have to go to the next play. Marcus Knight across in motion. Brady almost slipping down as he slips it over the middle to his tight end, two minutes, a short gain of about three to the 45. Brady almost slips down, gets the ball on the wide delay to his tight end, Tooman, who slips down. <laughs> A recurring theme. <laughs> Afraid so. Tough on the field. And another effective, efficient performance in progress by Tom Brady. With 62% of his passes for the year. Thomas, another big hole. And another touchdown saving dive by Jason Doring. All too often during the free safety has found himself faced with Anthony Thomas and nobody behind him. A recurring theme in terms of blocking. Number 36, Aaron Shea, the fullback, leading through from the backside. Stands up Donnell Thompson, the middle linebacker. Thompson should take him on with the other shoulder and get underneath him. He's being defeated here, as are the defensive linemen. The guy who has really been handled so far today, Bill, Tom Burke. Our 
Crosby ever called his name yet. Brady steps up away from pressure and has it picked off at the goal line by Fletcher. Jamar Fletcher has his sixth of the year and brings it back to the 25-yard line. Picked on him with a lot of success until this throw into some traffic in the end zone by Brady. Yeah, and Brady made this same mistake a week ago against Penn State, and this is the kind of thing that really should be eliminated from his game by now. He's in a little trouble, and rather than just run and get what he can get, he simply throws it into the end zone. Fletcher using his marvelous athletic ability and that radar that he has inside his head comes up to the interception. Which he's done more than anybody in the Big Ten this year. Play action and a toss for short yardage to Martin, the fullback, who is the second most popular target of Samuel, his second catch today and 17th of the year. The old adage in defensive football is that a screen and a reverse, those are hustle plays. The defensive linemen and linebackers simply have to come off their rush or their drop and sprint to the point of the attack. At that time, it worked for Michigan's defense. Creeping up. Strong safety. Dane going wide. Short side of the field. Short game. At what point, Bill, if you're Wisconsin, the ultimate classic Big Ten offense, do you have to vary a little bit from what's been your plan all year and, and put it up more than you want it to? Well, that's exactly what Brad Childress is trying to think about right here, the offensive coordinator. And it's a very legitimate question, David. It's a tough call because they pride themselves on being patient and staying with their plan. One thing's for sure, they need to start making some first downs here early in the third quarter. Seven to go here on this third down. This is picked up nicely and incomplete off the shoulder of Eric Grams to tight end. I'll tell you who made a decision at halftime. It's Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator for the Wolverines. He said, we're going to keep right on going after them. I really thought we'd come out and see them in zone, playing it a little bit closer to the vest. No way. They're still blitzing, sending the safety off the corner, sending the linebackers every play. Go again, Stimke. Michigan playing return all the way. Marcus Knight, did he touch it? Well, judging from his body language, no, and it is down at the two. Badger's saying, give it to us. But they're not going to get it. It's a 70-yard kick. Stemke had a 62-yarder killed at the one last week against Minnesota. Even better here. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by Sprint. With long distance, wireless, internet, and data services, Sprint connects you to your world. The outstanding Wisconsin special teams turn it over to their defense at the three-yard line, and the defense needs to turn in a big play here, maybe a takeaway with Michigan backed up, but leading by 14, 10.39 to go in the third quarter. Hard to believe, John Jansen, number 77, the veteran senior captain, moving early. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense. Half the distance penalty, the down remains first. The Wisconsin defense must get a stop right here. There is a very high percentage, if you stop someone inside the 10-yard line, force them to punt out of the end zone, you end up with at least three points. Wisconsin needs some kind of boost. 29 takeaways, including the Fletcher interception. A moment ago, Clarence Williams. Hit by Donnell Thompson, Taylor, and Eccles at the two. Big question on that punt. Did it touch the left hand of Marcus Knight? Whether it did or not, this is a very poor decision, uncharacteristic of Marcus. He's done a great job back here after five punts were dropped by Michigan returners. 
Alvarez thinks that it touched his hand. Marcus does not, and the official agrees with Marcus. Williams to the five. It's looking like Wisconsin's going to have to get a break like that. Well, it was a tremendous field position shift, and it's what a Wisconsin team is accustomed to, and it's what they've made their living upon. Now they must get this stop and force the punt out of there and get some field position, and then the offense must move it and score. Five minutes have already elapsed in the third quarter. They haven't done anything to correct their situation, and that's a critical period. This is a very big play right here. Very big, indeed. Ready to throw out of his own end zone, juggled, and Williams hangs on at the four where he quickly goes down under Donnell Thompson. Vincent will have to kick it out of his own end zone. And where is Tom Burke all this day? We haven't called his name much. Bob Adamoff, number 29, came on a blitz, forced the poor throw, really was responsible for the play. Just about as far back as you can get. The high snap is blocked. Vincent had it blocked. Picked up at the 10. The Wolverines get a bit of a return by Sean Thompson. But the Badger special teams do it again. The ball will be placed where the Michigan man touched it. Just who you would expect, Tim Rosga, who was close to a block in the first half. His third block kick this year, fourth of his career, all set up by the high snap. Big break, Badgers. Yeah. Badgers needed a big play from their special teams in Roseville, Minnesota Junior. Tim Rosga, just the man for the job. The third block kick by Rosga this year. This is a design play with the blockers splitting here. Rosga comes up the middle. The snap is poor by Rob Renas, the nose guard. It's high. This causes the time to be changed. This time he takes it right off the foot of the punter. Beautiful job by Tim Rosga. He loves it, too. That's something he does with regularity. Rob Renas playing a, a good, tough game at nose guard on defense. It's hard to go in there and snap the ball, but you've got to do it a little better than that, Rob. We don't have to say how big this series is. Chris Chambers in motion. Give it to Ron Day. Runs through two tackles and then tripped up at the last instant before he was going to turn that corner for six by Marcus Ray. As we get updated on Penn State Northwestern, Larry B. All right, Dave, you got to watch this one, all right? Penn State Northwestern, SB voters, check this out. Eric McCoo bounces to the outside, down the sidelines. There goes the ball, fumble, perfect bounce to himself. That kind of year for Northwestern for the touchdown, 24 to 3. How do you like that? <laughs> that is the ultimate bounce. Man, second and goal badges. From the six, they are all over Samuel, and it is incomplete. And it's again Marcus Ray making up for lost time. And everybody who wonders what happened to the defense early in the year, they were missing this man. Two consecutive plays, Mr. Ray personally makes sure that nothing good happens. Here's Ray coming off the corner. That's what Tommy Hendricks did all the first half. He's not dissuaded by the fake. Right up in the quarterback's face. Boom. Forces the bad throw. Now six games for dealings with an agent. Reinstated. In time for Penn State last week. A lot of pent-up aggression being released by Ray. Here's third and goal from the six. Samuel in big trouble. Can't get rid of it. Josh Williams, James Hall, combining to sack Samuel. And it's a loss of 15 yards. And you cannot take this sack. As a veteran quarterback, you do something with this ball. You throw it in the dirt, you find somebody with a white shirt and an eligible number, and you throw it at his feet. You do not put your kicker in this position to try to make a 39-yarder. Matt Davenport, though, has missed only once all year, 16 of 17, with a long of 48. 
And he adds another one to that stellar stat. Maybe the best kicker in college football this year. Senior from Mission Viejo, California, gets the Badgers points, which they had to have, but they have to settle for just three. If well, the black punt turns into another Matt Davenport field goal, and it's 21-10. to Now, after taking that 15-yard loss on the sack, Mike Samuel looking very shaky as he made his way to the bench, and we've seen Scott Cavanaugh, his backup, warming up throughout that timeout. We'll get a Dave Ryan update momentarily. The deep kick again by Pesetsky, and this time Fargus will not repeat his mistake of running it out of the end zone as he did on the opening kick of the second half. So down we go to Dave Ryan. Yeah, guys, regarding uh, Mike Samuel, a moment ago, talk with Denny Helwig, their head trainer. He got a bloody nose after that hard sack and play a moment ago from James Hall and company. He will be okay, though. He's clear to go back in the game. Kavanaugh is getting loose, as you mentioned, but Mike Samuel good to go back in uh, when Wisconsin gets the ball back, guys. Yeah, even though it's not the greatest day for Mike, there's Kavanaugh warming up. Mike is a tough guy, and a little bloody nose is not going to have any effect on him. He will be back to play. You can count on him. Brady rarely hurried again today. Has Ty Streets who coughed it up and came right back into his breadbasket. Yeah, if you ever doubt that it's Michigan's day, that bounce right there is going to be a demoralizing thing. But once again, Jamar Fletcher fell down trying to change direction. So Ty Streets is in good shape there. And as he goes down, he coughs it up. Where does it land? Right in his stomach. Jamar falls down on the bad footing. Watch the ball. It's punched out by Grison. Right back down in Ty's stomach. There Williams. Cuts back into the clear. Another saving hit at the 20 by Jason Doring. Every time he looks up, he's stopping another potential touchdown. 43 yards for Clarence Williams. Great, great job blocking downfield by number 85, Marcus Knight. Anytime you see a long run, you'll see a receiver out in front of the back who's hustling, sprinting all the way across the field. There he goes. He's the blue shirt crossing the field right there. Marcus Knight down the sideline, escorting his ball carrier, adding about 25 yards to the game. Great blocking by Marcus Knight, number 85. And Bill, with that, Michigan has 200-yard rushers. Here's one of them. Anthony Thomas, who was upended out of bounds by Mike Eccles. Williams, with that first, went to 117 yards on his 19 carries, and that was Anthony Thomas's ninth. He has 102. Not at all what you're accustomed to seeing out of this stout Wisconsin defense. I'll tell you that I've said this before and I'll say it again. This offensive line for Michigan has enormous talent. They won the national championship last year with the rest of their team. And they have taken control of this game. And if you're a Michigan fan, you gotta wonder where was this all year? Williams tried to spin away from Donnell Thompson, couldn't do it. Third down coming. All started for Williams. Well, the very first series, he's been running hard and effective all day, and a big defensive stand for Jim Herman's group got it going. One of the major goals for every defense in America is to get the offense stopped after a big turnover deep in our territory. Jim Herman couldn't be happier with this performance by his defense in those difficult circumstances. They're down and seven for Brady. Looks up. Pump fake, going to run it and come up just short. Thompson and Fabre get him at about the 12, and he needed to get just inside the 11. That close. These are the tough moments for a head coach. What do we do here? Fourth and short, absolutely no pressure, plenty of time to find the open receiver, none there. He runs to make it close. Coach Carr has elected to go for the field goal. Maybe. <laughs> Last time we thought that uh, was not the case. I bet he goes for it here. 29 yards by Keeley is good. 
Yeah, I think Coach looked at Jay Feely and said, I really like you kicking better than I do carrying the ball. Let's look at the remainder of our Saturday game schedule. Five Eastern on ESPN2, number five, Florida State. At Wake Forest, Marcus Alston taking over for the injured Chris Winkie, quarterback for the Seminoles. 7.30 Eastern from the SEC, Quincy Carter, Champ Bailey at number 18, Georgia at Auburn. Back on the deuce at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, number 12, Virginia Tech, number 25, Syracuse. Big implications of that one of the Big East. Waving what they hope's a victory flag in Ann Arbor on a chilly Saturday afternoon. Overcast, chance of rain later on. From the early moments, all Michigan. Once they recovered from the 80-yard Samuel to Chambers touchdown, they have rolled over the bat. Yeah, and you have to confess here that the schedule is a factor. Michigan's been in dogfights virtually every week, while Wisconsin's pretty much had their way with their opponents. Michigan's just a little bit more of what we call tournament tough. They've been 15 rounds more times than Wisconsin. Epstein. Davis on the return to the 27. So the Badgers see their field goal matched, and they are right back behind by two touchdowns under five minutes to go in the third quarter, just as you expect. It's going to take more than a bloody nose to get Mike Samuel to leave this one. I like this guy, Epstein, the uh, place, the uh, kickoff guy for Michigan. He can kick him out of the end zone. He can also kick the blue kick when he's into the win, showing his versatility. That's the freshman from California. So that has been a very effective strategy against Ron Dane, who on his 14th carry is stopped for no gain. That'll leave him at 36 yards, more than 100 below his average. And here's an offensive line that has been dominant. They have ground people into fine dust all year long, and they're being whipped. We talked a lot about the offensive line for Michigan. We should be giving credit to Rob Renas. Joaquin Fazell, James Hall, Jake Fleisinger. Play action, Hendricks coming out of blitz, so Samuel steps up. Keeper for about five to the 33. And what a play by Tommy Hendricks. Once again, blitzing from the blitzing, that is. Not blitzing. So now blitz. I'm hungry, great. Yep. There was no cheese blitz there. It was a safety blitz. Kept his footing, chased the quarterback down from behind, and kept him from springing to the first down. Dane being neutralized the way he is, that has got to be psychologically devastating for Wisconsin. Psychologically and every other way. How could they be stopping our big guy? They're just whooping it. Much more time this time, and he overthrows Ahmad Merritt, who had three defenders back there with him. Now, I assure you that Marcus Knight has been given a mini clinic on the sideline over there about what to do and what not to do with this football. That is the fifth consecutive three and out by the Wisconsin offense. Knight made Dante King the gunner miss, and he gets about a five-yard return out of it. Another day in which Stemke, at this point, probably about as good a weapon as the Badgers have, 45-yarder. Well, he started as a true freshman a year ago. He's from Green Bay, so he understands football, and he was an instant hit. And uh, he and his coverage unit lead the Big Ten in net punting. But they have a tremendous special teams unit here. All their units are excellent, but Stimke, one of the better punters in the nation. Their net punting is 40.4 yards. That's superb. Certainly hasn't gone down today. 
possession to give to Anthony Thomas. Off tackle for a couple. Nick Grison, the freshman from Sturgeon Bay, made the tackle. Tomorrow night, the NFL in primetime on ESPN. Sunday night football at 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific. Features perhaps the best running back to ever play the game. Barry Sanders and the Lions hosting the Bears. Monday night football begins at 8 Eastern and features the defending Super Bowl champion Broncos on the road in Kansas City. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime NFL football. Brady for Streets. And Fletcher doesn't lose his footing this time. Streets will be close for the first down. Tom Burke plays to the wide side of the field, so he's worked on both tackles today. Right here, we're going to see him on John Jansen, big 77, the offensive tackle. Uh-oh, John got a little piece of shirt there. Got away with it that time. Tom Burke virtually neutralized in this game. Which nobody has come close to doing this year. Yeah, and I don't see him with the same sort of zip that I normally am accustomed to seeing from him. That surprises me. There's a lot about this game that surprises me from the standpoint of Wisconsin. This is the two most physical teams we've seen this year, David, and one of them's really being physical today. Anthony Thomas. After Streets did pick up the first down, Ben Herbert, another true freshman, a la Grison out of McDonald, Pennsylvania, all-state linebacker out of Pennsylvania, just as his coach Barry Alvarez was. Yeah, that was a good job by Ben. He flowed out there, got underneath the blocking because that thing was off for another nice gain if he didn't make that tackle. Number 42, the true freshman. safety no match for the wide receiver number 85 Marcus Knight what a marvelous throw and catch strong safety turn looked into the backfield rather than to adjust to the body position and location of his man Marcus Knight's having a big day wow 18 Michigan first down Badgers five good heavens Anthony Thomas strung out just about to perfection that time by little Mike Eccles. And let's get a Northwestern Penn State update from Larry B. Michigan State, let's make it clear. Close enough, close enough. Still Big Ten, Michigan State and Purdue. It's Bill Burke, low angle here to Plaxico Burris. Defender is there, and Plaxico says, I want it. That's mine. 14-3 Spartans in the third. Well, normally, as so many people have pointed out this week, if Ohio State loses to a team from Michigan, it's this team, not the Spartans, who ended their national title hopes last week. Aaron Shea having another big day ahead to the 30, where Thompson, Fletcher, and Taylor all gather around him. It'll be third and two. We asked the Michigan players whether or not there was a plan to help out on Burke if necessary. He beats Jansen right now inside. Fortunately, Thomas is right there to help out. But another good throw and catch, and Aaron Shea continues to impress. Yeah, you don't see the usual sparkle in those uh, eyes of Tom Burke at the end of the third quarter. Badgers make no progress at all. They still trail by 14, 24-10. Their unbeaten record, their ticket to Pasadena. In grave doubt in Ann Arbor, Michigan on an overpowering day by the Wolverines. Yeah, is... Fourth quarter now from the Big House, 24-10 Michigan. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan from Michigan Stadium. Where the Wolverines will begin the quarter, the seventh play of this drive, looking at a third and two from the Wisconsin 30. Flag is down. Thomas really was down before he 
righted himself after slipping and took the handoff for a loss hit quickly by John Favre. Our referee David Whitbo. Well, taking a while to sort this one out. The looks of things has Michigan backing up. Now here's the call. Illegal formation. Only six on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Repeat, third down. The reason they got six on the line of scrimmage, they only got ten guys in the game. They come out of a break. Here's another one of those mistakes that just drives you crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got to have seven. There's no wide receiver out here. There's no tight end on the end of that line. Somebody forgot to go in the game, and it looks like it's Mr. Knight who's had such a good day. The other thing that happened is that, that Thomas fell down trying to get out of his stance to run with the ball. Anthony Thomas, a 59-yard touchdown, accounting for most of his 104 yards. Williams, 118, is the first time since early last year against Baylor, 200-yard rushers. Yeah, so what, what Coach Alvarez was complaining about is that he has an option there. They didn't give him his option. He declined the penalty. I was wondering why in the world you wouldn't take that play. He yeah, stuff him on third to two. Fell down, slipped and fell, and didn't make anything. And now you've got fourth and six, and they're going to have to try the field goal. And it's a long one. It's a 49-yarder. Bealy has the leg. He has up to 51 this year. And he also has the wind at his back. Brady to hold. Jansen the snap. Enough leg. And he punched it right through. And he slipped and fell. And he slipped and fell as he kicked it. Coach Carr can't believe his good luck. When your plant foot goes like that, the ball usually goes into the line, it's blocked, and then it's bouncing around for the defense to return, perhaps for a touchdown. So this is Michigan's day in every way. This is remarkable. This just doesn't happen very often. Fortunately, he got that leg through before he went down. With plenty to spare, Lloyd Carr first to congratulate him on his incredible good fortune. And good leg. Where do you think they get that paint, David? I mean, I'd like to sell it. I know that. I'd be, be so rich I wouldn't get to work with you. I wouldn't have to. You're better off up in Green Bay where they paint their whole stomachs and all when it's 40 below. And they got large stomachs that they bring to the paint. And it's 10 below zero. But well, one way to stay warm. Yeah, well, there are other ways, and that's not the way they do it in Green Bay. <laughs> not even cold today, as a matter of fact. Beautiful day. Now it'll take three scores for Wisconsin. That was a very big field goal. Barker and Davis have been fielding short high kicks, and now Epstein goes deep again, and it's not going to be returned. Badgers came in looking for their second Rose Bowl under Alvarez, their first since the great 10-win 93 campaign. Michigan had its own hopes, and they needed this win today and at Columbus next week. Wisconsin, either the win today or if they beat Penn State, Madison next week, and Ohio State beats Michigan, they can still get in. Ohio State with the toughest road by fire, needing two wins. Iowa today, Michigan next week, and Wisconsin to lose today and next week to the Disney Lions. All three still with Pasadena possibility. 
Samuel throw it back to a wide open Grams is tight end. Look for a long time it was going to be a much bigger play. He's chased down by Air, by Ian Gold after just about an 11 yard pickup, but she couldn't be much more open than Grams was. They call him Go Rush. He probably missed his coverage with the big tight end coming across, so he simply set his sights on him and shot him down like a rocket. Please report the first day. Now, notice Graham's tried to put a move on him. I don't believe I'd have done that, Eric. I think I'd keep right on running. He's going to catch you in half. Hendricks came from a safety blitz, and Samuel is sacked yet again. And this time it is Grady Brooks, backup rush linebacker, who has come in for James Hall. The sophomore out of Dallas gets the sack. Grady Brooks coming up against the big guy, 79, Aaron Gibson. 370 pounds, you still have to move your feet. All he had to do was bend his knees, move his feet, and drive Brooks down inside. Brooks was too quick for him. Excellent pass rush by the backup linebacker, number 59, Grady Brooks. So give Samuel a loss of three. Second and 13, leads to 41. Given time, a little bit too tall for Nick Davis, who is only 5'10". Let's hear from Larry Beal. All right, Dave, Michigan State and Purdue. Bill Burke got that sidearm sling. All day to throw, boy. Touchdown, Chris Baker. 21-13 Spartans important because these teams are fighting for bowl eligibility. Purdue needs a win. Michigan State needs two. Minnesota needs two. Important because bowl eligible teams means cash for the conference. Spots may go to some at-large teams that are reserved for the Big Ten. It'll be interesting to see how that shakes out the rest of the month. Third and 13. Samuel has got to get something out of this. Got away from Brooks this time, and incomplete. Davis went to his knees to try to bring that one in. I'm not even sure if he was the intended receiver, but he ended up closest. Well, he should have had the first one. Nick Davis is a local kid, a freshman. He's a fine player from Manchester, Michigan. Barry was worried about him being too uptight. All he had to do was, that ball was high, you mentioned. He could have caught that one, would have gotten him the first down. He told Barry, I can catch BBs in the dark, coach. Well, you got to catch footballs, too, Nick. Not quite the Howard service that he's accustomed to. It's returnable for Knight, who almost makes it to midfield. 35-yard kick, very unstemky like comes back 12. 13.07 to play. Michigan sitting on a 17-point lead. ESPN's presentation of Big Ten football is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. And by Propecia. Talk to your doctor today. Well, Badger fans came into Michigan Stadium today with roses on their minds, but right now worry on their faces. And with good reason, down 17 points. Michigan ball near midfield. Just over 13 minutes to go. Clarence Williams taking another turn and tail back, and he cuts into Badger territory for a pickup of a couple. Well, the numbers are uh, just amazing for Michigan. 445 total yards. Wisconsin held to 152. And since the first quarter, 329 of those yards are rung up by the Wolverines. 13 first downs to only two allowed by their defense. Wisconsin, the number that we update every time we see them, only 26 rushing attempts when they have fewer than 50 under Barry Alvarez. They're 27, 39, and 4. When they have 50 or more rushes, 31 and 2. Almost unbeatable. Nice step on by Williams to get away from Leonard Taylor and finally spun out of bounds by Tom Burke, who finally gets in on a tackle. Let's go down to Dave Run. Dave, yesterday after the Wolverines walked through practice, there were some special moments for the outgoing seniors. One was a speech from senior captain John Jansen playing his final home game at Michigan today. Jansen told his fellow seniors they've been given a second chance after the team's 0-2 start at the Rose Bowl last year. In fact, any other game they've ever played in their lives is not as important as today against the Badgers. He said we could be Big Ten champs. Let's go out of the big house in style. It's up to the seniors to make plays, and Dave and Bill, they have done that very well today. They followed instructions. 
Here's third and seven. Three wide outs. Brady with time to pick multiple targets overthrows Marcus Knight. Just like last week, he has had five, six, seven seconds sometimes to just sit back there in his rocking chair and pick people out. Wonderful job by the offensive line. It's impossible to say how important that has been, both last week and this week. You pointed out, Dave, when you can stand back there that long, you usually do a good job. Brady's done a good job with the exception of that last throw. Vincent Ames for the coffin corner. This is a nice effort, but it will go for a touchback. 48 yards. 12.07 to go. 27-10, Wolverines. Long, largely frustrating day for Tom Burke and the Badger defense. 17 sacks leading the nation coming in. No sacks today. Did that match up with John Jansen? And sometimes Jeff Backus, depending on where Burke lines up, he has been more than held in check. Not really a factor. Badgers take over at the 20-yard line. They need three scores, time running down. They swing to Dane. Marcus Ray fights off the block and hits Dane after a gain of about four. One of the toughest things in football to do is to take on a big blocker in the open field, bounce off him, and then tackle a good ball carrier. Marcus Ray, number 29, the strong and free safety at various times for Michigan, does that superbly right here. Here comes Marcus, boom, right into that big guy, Ferrario. <laughs> then he hits that other guy who's just as big. He might not knock him back, but he gets him down. Ferrario's got it by exactly 100 pounds at 304. Ray got the better of it. The Heidi Jones has Samuel back at the 17. Is that the third time today that Ron Dane and Samuel have been on different pages? It's absolutely unbelievable that this could happen, and I'm sure Mike Samuel finds it unbelievable. You got no pitch back. You got the option so you can go down the sideline, and your All-American tailback is going the wrong way. Look, there's nobody out here. There's nobody out here. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Hey, man, I'm going this way. We've been calling this play for three years. Well, they gave him his progress to the 20. Off Dane's hands and incomplete. We haven't seen the usual Burke. We haven't seen a shadow of the usual Dane. No, and Barry Alvarez is as surprised as we are. I promise you. I guarantee you nobody thought this was coming. These men seem like they were ready to play, and they have just been manhandled out here today, and now they're giving it away. Coaching staff talking all week about how you can't get ready for this one. There's something wrong with you. Ron Dane has never looked into this game mentally, emotionally. Stempy upset with himself. Not a good kick, only 31 yards. Coming up tonight at 7:30 Eastern ESPN Prime Time College Football. Ron Franklin and Mike Gottfried at Jordan Hare Stadium for number 18 Georgia. Quincy Carter, Champ Bailey, the Bulldogs against the Auburn Tigers. 4.30 Pacific on your Saturday showcase for the best in college football, ESPN. Again, the Wolverines couldn't ask for better field position. Almost a midfield after the bad punt. Brady for the flag down slides at the 42 and where they threw it might well have holding Michigan. Yeah, there was some serious holding up there. I couldn't see who did it, but there was a drag down hog tie and tackle. They might have even tied their feet. <laughs> Whoever did it. <laughs> there it is. I don't know if they'll take it or not. Nope, they'll turn it down. Make them take the down and the loss on the sack. Brady didn't have anybody open, 
so he wisely pulled the ball down, took the sack, come back to fight another time. Tom Brady really made an impression a couple of years ago on Lloyd Carr when after seriously considering transferring because he didn't want to play behind Brian Greasy and Scott Dreisbach. Took a while to think about it, decided to stay, and he told Lloyd Carr, I'm going to stay and show you why you should play me at quarterback, which is exactly what he's done this year. Threw that one away in the area of Anthony Thomas. Learned a lot this year, including when not to put it up where the other guys can get. One big mistake last week and a couple today. But as we go along here, we see more and more maturity out of Brady. Donnell Thompson right on the screen. Good. Throw it in the dirt. Ball is thrown on time. Regardless of whether it's completion or not, they don't take the side. So on third and 17, time to go deep. Incomplete for night with the coverage by Eccles. Got a really good spin move and a pass rush right there by Ross Kalaji. Of course, that throw actually was a pretty good throw, but Eccles was in coverage, and it was um, extremely well done by the defense. I think it's important for the Wisconsin team to finish this game strongly, play really hard. There, there's a lassitude. No good word. What for the block? They get a fair catch by Nick Davis. Back at the 11, a 48-yarder. Nicely done by Vincent. 9.38 to go. Badgers looking to conjure up some offense out of nothing in Ann Arbor. If well, apparently Mike Samuel's day is done. The senior from Philadelphia will be replaced by Scott Cavanaugh, Jr. out of Naperville, Illinois. 13 of 22 for the year, 182 yards and four touchdowns through the air, only one less than Samuel. But they start off with Dane on the ground, one of his better games all afternoon. Close to 10 for the first down. Only his 15th carry, 46 yards now for Ron Dane. The career numbers for Kavanaugh. In a situation, Bill, where you need three scores, you have nine and a half minutes having to put it up. Kavanaugh gets the nod and Samuel gets the bench. Sometimes all you can do is make a change and hope that your backup quarterback can go in and get a hot hand. It happens. It'll be very difficult for Kavanaugh to generate anything here because the protection has not been good for Samuel. He did not appear to be as sharp as he normally is. That's understandable. He was having <laughs> bullets were flying. There's a real thing was flying all around his head. Plus, he had all the pressure coming into the game from the outside activity. First down, Wisconsin. Cross over the middle of the tight end that Eric Grams makes this catch. Pick up a five. Missouri and Texas A&M. Big one in the Big 12. Larry Beal? Absolutely, Dave. The Aggies were down 7-6. Randy McCown, one yard line, takes it in on the quarterback keeper. Two-point play gives them a 14-7 lead. And Kentucky, Tim Couch, a couple of touchdown passes as well as two picks. 17-3 over Vandy as they approach halftime there. A&M hoping to win today, and if Texas wins later tonight at Texas Tech, that sets up the Big 12 South. Winner take all in Austin between the Horns and the Aggies the day after Thanksgiving. First time out call by Wisconsin. 8.39 to go. Barry Alvarez, the Badgers in desperate straits. to look forlorn when you're wearing a cheese head. It's such festive headwear, but <laughs> scoreboard. Well, they're doing it. Tells the story. <laughs> they found a way, and I don't blame them. This has been a tough afternoon for the Badgers. Cecil Martin out in motion as they give it to Dane. And more of the Rondane than we expected to see. And we have very seldom seen. He gets the first out, hit by the Honey Jones and, and Sam Sword. What would you say to a guy whose head has been anywhere but in the huddle where it's been 
needed, sadly needed today in Rondé. Well, it depends on his personality. The coaches know their men, and the coaches have had him over on the sideline talking to him. And some guys, you have to get in their face, and you got to jump start them a little bit. You got to shock them. Other guys, you can't treat that way. And I don't know which one Ron would be. He had never played Michigan until today. Injured, missed a game last year. Pass is incomplete, intended for Chris Chambers. So you knew Dane had to be looking forward to this. Michigan collectively, defensively, definitely was. We asked some of them yesterday, would you rather play a pile driver like Dane or a guy that's hard to catch like Antoine Elliott? They all said, we want Dane. He's the Big Ten back. Okay, Ron Dane lined up seven and a half yards deep in his traditional tailback position. The option's coming this way. Ron goes the other way. Here he is. Option going to right. Ron goes to the left. Hard to believe. Hard to impossible to understand. Sometimes you get too excited. That's about all I can figure. Dane in traffic and hit quickly by Joaquin Fazell, the senior out of Fort Valley, Georgia. And third down and 11 coming. The defensive strategy has changed entirely for the University of Michigan, and properly so. Jim Herman is now in zone defense. He's playing the run with seven people. They'll give up some yards rushing. They'll play the screen, stop it for no gain. They will not give up a big play here. Of that, you may rest assured. And I'm not talking about a pre bit defense. What they've been doing is blitzing and playing man all day. Now they're going into a two deep zone or rolling to a three deep. Call it third and ten. Blitz comes on Kavanaugh, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted by Hendricks, intended for Chambers. When they've gone to Chambers, three or four Wolverines have been there ever since that 80 yarder. Yeah, and as soon as I talk about them being in zone, they come with a corner blitz. James Whitley is coming off the corner from the open side. This is the long side. Chambers running the dig pattern. He's not open. Ball thrown in the dirt. <laughs> Whitley was breathing down his neck. Stepkey, who's been off and on today, has one fair caught at the 25 by night, 41-yard punt. And let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave and Bill heading into this game, Wisconsin coach is very concerned with Michigan quarterback Tom Brady. Defensive backs coach Phil Almation thinks Brady and Purdue's Drew Brees are the top two quarterbacks they'll face all year. It's Brady's ability to make a five-step drop, see the entire field so well, and rarely make bad decisions, checking off that first receiver, finding a secondary without any trouble. 62% completion rate. Guys, they're very worried about that coming in. Well, Brees and Purdue really the only team that moved the ball Wisconsin coming into this one as Justin Fargus gets his first carry the freshman out of Encino California Purdue had the most points allowed by Wisconsin in a 31 24 loss Michigan now has that high scoring mark and unlike against Purdue the Wisconsin offense has not been able to even keep close to what the Michigan offense has been rolling up. Do you think Jim Herman heard what I said about not blitzing and sent the corner just to make me look at you? <laughs> Second and seven. Vargas threw the first wall and hit by the quarterback Mike Eccles to set up third and short. Mike Eccles. There are two timeouts left for Wisconsin. So almost goes without saying very important to get a stop here force a punt as we get down near the six minute mark Justin Fargus number 34 a true freshman out of California is going to be a star he has a burst he's explosive he's gotten to play he's been significant in a big win in Northwestern get the ball here Fargus gets the first down and the beat goes on the offensive line for Michigan doing a job time after time. Now Maurice Williams, number 54, been out with an ankle. It's back in there at guard, and they're doing a good job. They're just knocking those guys in the white shirt back. And this is the fun part of the end of a football game between two physical teams. We thought both teams would be equally physical today, Dave, but only one has really come out to play. Unaccustomed territory for Wisconsin, 9-0 coming in. 
as physical as the Michigan Wolverines. And on the other hand, Michigan's used to this. In the Big Ten, undefeated versus undefeated after November 10th. You look back over the years, and Michigan has been involved four previous occasions, or against four previous opponents. Five times they've met Ohio State undefeated. Wisconsin, Illinois, Purdue, Michigan's used to this. And Wisconsin is not. Eight of the nine games, and you look at Lloyd Carr's record against top ten teams. After today, it'll be nine and zero oh unless something miraculous happens here. Vargas, his back is turned, but his legs keep churning. Eccles and Adamoff finally subdue it. That can you is, imagine? I, I don't know that anybody's resume has ever had an 8-0 and zero against top 10. About to go 9-0. and zero. Now it'll be 9. I mean, you can have a great football team and be 3-8, and 1-6 and six against top 10 teams. I mean, if you look at the great coaches. I mean, Tom Osborne and Bear Bryant, when you play those top teams, I mean, it's hard to beat them. This guy has done it every single time without exception. That's amazing to me. Vargas, and that will be for a loss as Nick Grison, who's played most of the way with Godorzi injured and Roger Knight starting, but not playing all that much. And this is Vargas, who is getting his right leg looked at. The way he went down did not look good. Just have to hope that it's something minor. Justin's a great young back. The world's a potential. Here he comes trying to get to the outside. Grison runs him down. Yeah, his leg gets bent underneath Grison. It could be the knee or the ankle, or it could be a muscle. But we don't need to speculate on it until we know. Dave Ryan will be on the scene down there and find out for us. They're taking his shoe off so that it would appear that it might be an ankle. While we have a moment, let's hear from Larry Beal in the studio. Larry? All right, Dave, in the Big East, West Virginia and Rutgers Mountaineers trying to keep their Big East title hopes alive. It's Mark Bolger, play action off balance, throw the Anthony Beck for the touchdown as the Mountaineers now lead it by two touchdowns. Out in the whack, Air Force and Wyoming scoreless in the second quarter. If Wyoming wins this game, they clinch the WAC Mountain Division title. Well, still looking at Justin Fargus, and they uh, have the cart out, and they're about to put him, it would appear, on a stretcher. Now, the Rose Bowl situation coming into this one, Michigan needing two wins today and at Columbus. Wisconsin either a win today or next week when they host Penn State if Ohio State beats Michigan. So this is not necessarily a fatal defeat for Wisconsin's Rose Bowl hopes. Ohio State still a chance. Two wins. Wisconsin losing today, Wisconsin losing to Penn State next week. The route for the Buckeyes to Pasadena. We have a timeout, 3.56 to go, fourth quarter. We'll return to the big house in a moment. Larry Beal in the studio with an update on Missouri and Texas A&M. Fourth and four from the nine yard line for the Tigers. Corby Jones to a wide open Dwayne Blakely to tie this a Big 12 tilt up at 14 with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Florida rolling over South Carolina 33 to 7 in the third quarter. Penn State no sweat with Northwestern as the Wildcats are on their way to another loss. That one is over on the deuce. And Michigan State and Purdue both trying to get bowl eligible in the fourth quarter. The Spartans leading 24 to 13. Indiana, Antoine Randall L. just scored on a touchdown. 20 to 19 over Minnesota. The Golden Gophers also have some bowl hopes on the line. Let's go back now to Dave and Bill. All right, Larry, and uh, they're still working on Justin Fargus. The preliminary word we get from the bench is a dislocated knee for Justin Fargus and gingerly being loaded onto the stretcher, then the cart, and they will take him to uh, further medical attention. Top running back recruit in a long time out of California. 
where he gained 6,300 yards in his high school career. He was the state 100 meters champion. His his secret is his speed. And for a guy with legs like that, you absolutely hate to see something like this happen. You really do. And I have seen time after time, though, great players like this go through the rehab process, whatever has to be done, and come back to have an outstanding career. It's amazing what modern medicine does for these very difficult injuries. I've endured one myself, and I'm thankful to say that Dr. Robert Fiend down in Houston, Texas, did a great job, and I've been moving around for 25 years, and I'm sure they'll be able to fix just enough. Now, the medical staff at the University of Michigan, second to none. And you take a look at the faces of every player on that field on both teams, and what's there is genuine concern for Justin Fargus. The game loses all, I and mean, it just all pales compared to the help of one of your teammates or opponents. He'll get a big hand from this wonderful crowd. We'll all be pulling for Justin. Jim Herman and his defensive unit has turned in another masterpiece in a series ever since they opened in the disaster to Notre Dame. From 96th in the country, they began this game ranked 11th in the country, and they stand to move up into the top 10, having allowed only 175 total yards, only 43 rushing yards, to the best rushing attack in the Big Ten. Low end over end job by Vincent. He is fielded by Davis quickly downed at the 16 yard line by Todd Howard. A 43 yarder by Vincent. And the Michigan defense has been the dominant theme of their resurgence. The last seven weeks, today no exception. James Hall penetrating in the backfield through the big offensive line. Ian Gold, the go rush. Hall and Whitley again on the quarterback. Too much defense, too long, too hard. They've really illustrated why it is so many coaches say you can't win without the ability to stop the run. When the offense isn't there, the defense can keep you in games. Perfectly illustrated by the 15-10 win at Minnesota a couple of weeks ago. Cavanaugh keeps he can motor a little bit by Samuel <laughs> up Is to that, the 31. Would we call that a, a Barnett caveat? Uh, he can yeah. motor yeah. a little bit. He took his 485 and <laughs> took it up in there. In the Samuel mode. Very much in the Samuel mode, but by golly, he made himself a first down. And we'll get further word on uh, Justin Fargus momentarily from Dave Ryan. Cavanaugh looking for Chambers and broken up, almost intercepted by James Whitley. Now down to Dave Ryan. Located right. Well, a little mic trouble for Dave. We'll work on that. Really heard nice him. defensive play by James Whitley, number five, just now. He's sort of been the forgotten man. He started the year as a scintillating punt returner and then had a heck of a time catching the ball. They sat him down from that. He's back out on the field now playing corner. He's had a good game. Movement on the offensive line. It'll be on Wisconsin. Prior to the snap, ball starts, offense. Five yard penalty, the down remains second. Maryland and Duke, a Larry Beal update. Yeah, Dave, another wacky play today. Bobby Campbell, Duke quarterback, ready to pass. Whoops, where'd the ball go? All right, stays with it, picks it up. Now, throws, Richmond Flowers at the 10, breaks a tackle for the touchdown. However, the Terps still lead it by 10. I've never seen bounces like we've seen today. Basketball. Looks like a pass break. <laughs> Twice. Kavanaugh here makes it delivered by Whitley right into the waiting hands of James Hall. 
who earned Defensive Player of the Week honors in the Big Ten last week. Two sacks, a forced fumble, a blocked field goal against the Nittany Lions, and he turns in another big play to help slam the door on the Badgers. Strictly a mistake by Kavanaugh. His lead blocker, Bill Ferrario, is pulling. He's supposed to stay on the outside hip of Ferrario. When he ducks inside, gets drilled in the stomach. That's what causes the bad throw. All he had to do is stay on the outside hip of his lead blocker. That big guy's out there. He's your buddy. He's the only friend you've got out there. You can't duck up underneath. You'll get hit every time. Scott Dreisbach is in at quarterback for Michigan and getting a nice big ovation as he gives it to Walter Cross. Dreisbach has been the forgotten man at quarterback, a starter at 95 and 96. Last year, only three appearances, three attempts. This year, he's played in five games, has not thrown a pass. He spent most of his time playing on the special teams, showing uh, a, a very unselfish, team-oriented attitude that Lloyd Carr and the coaches really appreciate. He's handled himself beautifully. I had the privilege of coaching his brother, a wonderful fan. That comes in all the way across for the Wolverines. That down goes Cross, hit by Eric Mollick. And let's now go down to Dave Ryan. Yeah, Dave, and Bill, bad news for Justin Fargus. Team doctors tell me a severely dislocated right knee. They'll take him in for x-rays and further tests to make sure there are no fractures, but he is certainly done for the day, and it looks like for the season, unless they can uh, make a miraculous comeback for Justin Fargus. Well, we knew it looked bad as soon as it happened, and unfortunately, that is confirmed. Drive box, senior. Coming in for Brady, has a strike, and inside the 15-yard line, Kevin Bryant with his seventh catch of the year, an 18-yarder on the first completion of 98 for Scott Dreisbach. Our AXA equitable players of the game, Kevin Stemke, called on early and often today by Wisconsin, has killed six of his punts inside the 20, an average better than 44 yards, and for Michigan, the tailbacks who set the tone early, both over 100 yards, Anthony Thomas and Clarence Williams. Walter Cross with this give. 200 yard backs for the first time since over a year ago, early on against Baylor, September of 97. And coming up next, Larry Beal, all the scores and highlights on the Residence in College Game Day. Chris Kirk and Coach checking in from Manhattan, Kansas, as they prepare for one of their biggest games in recent memory, really. Let's go ahead and say it. It's their biggest game ever, no question, as they host Nebraska. Residence in College Game Day coming up next. Well, now Drew Henson, the freshman, the prize out of Brighton, Michigan, will take what might be the last step. Yeah, I need to say something here. We question the leadership of the Michigan team. Everybody questioned the leadership during their dark days. No questions anymore. The leadership, the seniors came and made a statement last week and this week. This is the 98 Michigan team. And the final exam that Wisconsin entered today, what do you give him, D minus? Well, I'm afraid they certainly didn't pass. It would have to be a very low grade, but they'll get a chance to play again next week, and I'm sure with their fine coaching staff, they'll be right back and ready to play. Maize and blue all afternoon today as 111,217 saw a dominating Michigan performance a la the national champions of a year ago. 27 to 10, the final. Wisconsin no longer undefeated. For Bill Curry, Dave Bryant, and our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett, so long from Ann Arbor, Michigan. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Let's send you back to the studio and Larry B. Thanks very much, Dave. Well, Wisconsin came in today feeling that they wanted to get rid of that Rodney Dangerfield reputation. 
They were unable to do it, and Michigan now in the driver's seat for the Rose Bowl as they head and face Ohio State next week. Welcome in to Residence in College Game Day. Larry Beal with you. We'll be checking in with the Game Day gang getting set for Kansas State and Nebraska. That game is going to kick off shortly. We'll have a preview of that one as well as a complete wrap-up on what's happening in college football in uh, the early hours of the day. And a reminder, at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, the National Horse Show from New York will be coming your way. So we got about 40 minutes to talk about a lot of college football here in the big game in the Big 12, Missouri and Texas A&M. The Aggies win with a guy named Dat Win, an undersized linebacker who's one of the finalists for the Butkus Award, along with Javon Kurse of Florida and Chris Claiborne of USC. Texas A&M and Missouri in the driving rainstorm today in College Station. First quarter, no score. Corby Jones trying to hang on to the football in this kind of weather, a real test. And before he's hit, the ball pops out, and then it's a mad scramble. A&M recovers the football. Still in the first quarter. There's Dat Win. Looking into the backfield, and he drags down Corby Jones. Strangely, it's the seventh game this season that the Aggies have played in the rain. Second quarter, Corby keeping it on the bootleg, showing the speed, gets knocked out of bounds after a 20-yard gain. First down for Missouri. And here is Corby Jones again, dancing around the corner for the touchdown. Here is Randy McCown. They were down 7-6 at this point. Two-point play made it a 14-7 lead. Here's Corby trying to lead his team back. Got a man wide open. That was fourth down from the nine-yard line. So it was tied at 14. But a Missouri fumble led to this. A field goal by Texas A&M with a minute and a half to play. And it is now 17-14, Texas A&M. Remember, their only loss this season came in their opener against Florida State as they still have got some fringe national championship hopes. 34 seconds left, and they lead it by a field goal. Let's take a look at the Big 12 standings here. In the north, Kansas State can lock up their half of the division with a win today over Nebraska. Meanwhile, A&M just a few seconds away from going 7-0 in the conference, and Texas will try to keep pace to make that season-ending clash between Texas and A&M a real meaningful one for the title. Now, coming up in just a matter of minutes on ABC, 3.30 Eastern, the kickoff between Nebraska and top-ranked K-State. UCLA tries to keep their winning ways going against Washington. Ohio State in a bounce-back game with Iowa. And North Carolina's Ronald Curry returning to what some feel is the scene of the crime, gave a verbal commitment to Virginia then decided to become a Tar Heel. All those games ready to kick off on ABC at 3.30 Eastern time. Well, this has been a scoreless battle all throughout the day, and so far that's the way it stands at halftime. Air Force and Wyoming. Goose eggs at the half. If Wyoming can win, they will clinch the WAC Mountain title. Certainly not scoreless when Florida takes the field against South Carolina. Doug Johnson to Aaron Kinney. 10-yard touchdown in the first quarter to make it 10-0 Gators to the second quarter. Tackle eligible. Kenyatta Walker lining up as a wide receiver. Florida's got only three linemen at the line of scrimmage. Some funky stuff here from Steve Spurrier. And it's all decoy material because Johnson hits Travis Taylor. Breaks away. 34-yard touchdown. 17-7 Gators. More from Johnson connecting with Travis McGriff on the post pattern. 36-yard touch. Too much Gators, 24 to 7 at the half, as they like to say you're either a Gator or you're a Gator bait. In South Carolina this season, yeah, they're certainly bait. They've been bait for everybody. So the Gators about to make it 27 straight wins in the swamp as they lead in the fourth quarter. Bounce back to the Big Ten. Northwestern and Penn State. First quarter, 7-3 Nittany Lions. Kevin Thompson play action. Joe Nastasi. Nasty Nastasi in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, 14-3, Nittany Lions. Big day for Dwayne Bates, star receiver, really hasn't gotten the football as much as Gary Barnett would like to get it to him this season. From Gavin Hoffman, hauls it in. Bates had four catches for 127 yards at the half. But here is Lamar Arrington. Oh, talk about athletic. Leaping over a blocker for the sack on Hoffman. And then Eric McCoo. This is a crazy play. Shows the way the whole season's gone for Northwestern. Ball's popped out. He runs out of bounds and then picks it up. That shouldn't count. That shouldn't count, but they gave him the touchdown anyway. Like I said, 
Penn State, at least they bounced back. They were shut out for the first time in 11 seasons last week, and they do roll it up on Northwestern as the Wildcats have now lost eight in a row, 41-10. Purdue and Michigan State, both teams needing wins to become bowl eligible. 3 nothing Purdue in the second quarter. Bill Burke to Gary Scott, nine-yard hookup. Stayed up 7-3 second quarter. Then Burke trying the little screen pass, but it was picked off for the touchdown. 10-7 Purdue second quarter, 13-10 Purdue, Plaxico Burris. Check out this catch, that's desire. Double coverage, 22-yard hookup, stayed up 14-13 third quarter. Then Burke, look at this, all the time in the world. Can eat lunch back there, the sidearm sling in the back of the end zone to Chris Parker. State leading 21-13. Remember, Purdue looking to become bowl eligible with a win. Cool Breeze, Drew Breeze, with a hookup to Randall Lane in the fourth quarter with just over five minutes to go. And that's where they stand right now. It's 24 to 19. Purdue needs to get the ball back to try to punch it in one more time. Minnesota and Indiana. Glenn Mason trying to rebound from last week's loss to Wisconsin. Billy Cochran to Ron Johnson. Gophers up. 19-7, but Antoine Randall, this guy's so dangerous. Can't wait to see him as a point guard for Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers, but he's dragged down after a 50-yard run, sets up this play. Antoine Randall, L. 19-14, Minnesota, and that touchdown run gave, well, actually, Minnesota, now trailing by a point as that touchdown run gave Indiana the lead at the end of the third quarter. Antoine Randall L. getting it done as the Gophers got to win their last two games to become bowl eligible, very much in jeopardy as uh, they head to the fourth quarter there. Here is the bowl situation and what teams need. Purdue needs a win, and you see their remaining opponents. Michigan State needs two victories. Minnesota needing two victories. This is really important because if you're the Big Ten, you've got six slots, you've got six contracts out there, and bowl appearances translate to cash for your conference. So that's why all of these wins for teams getting eligible is very, very important. Next week, you talk about important. Penn State and Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin, despite the loss today, they still have Rose Bowl hopes, but uh, they need a couple of things to happen. Penn State can play the spoiler. Michigan is in the driver's seat. Ohio State, should they win next week, they're also still in the running. But uh, it's kind of complicated at this point. Perhaps to explain the way things could go, we're going to head out to the game day gang live in Manhattan, Kansas. Chris Fowler and the gang talk about the game we just saw and look at other early action. Guys? Larry, thank you. This is a time not for BCS numbers, but for emotion, anticipation. They're going to smash themselves together to get about 42,000 in here. Not a very big crowd, but they promise to have an impact. That wind up there, that may have an impact as well. It's very balmy here. Temperatures in the 60s, more like a September day. But all of a sudden, the wind has started to blow. That'll make it tougher to pass. It'll put more of an emphasis on the physical aspects of this game, the running game. They've been playing highlights on the big screen here. They've been trying to get the crowd going. But, guys, not many of those highlights have come from past Nebraska games. The Cornhuskers have come in loose. They've come in ready, they say, with nothing to lose in this game. Well, I think they still have something to lose. Their pride is on the line here. Kansas State and Michael Bishop, very clear that they have got to be able to get him to the outside and throw the ball for Nebraska. They're going to try to contain him with the outside people. Chad Kelsey and also Mike Rucker, two defensive ends that are probably as good as anybody on one team. They can do a good job of slowing down the run. And also, when teams drop back to pass, they have great quickness. The other thing to keep in mind here is Tony Ortiz and Eric Johnson, two very fast outside linebackers. I expect Nebraska to blitz them all day. The key is stopping Michael Bishop. If they can do that, they're going to win. I like Nebraska in the upset. Well, Kansas State is going to have to beat them on the field. There's no question because this crowd is not big enough or not loud enough to intimidate the Big Red. This is not a big league stadium. This is a small place, like a small high school stadium, in fact. But they're <laughs> ready. And I'll tell you what, you curse. Chris mentioned it. The wind will be a factor. It will help Nebraska and hurt Kansas State's passing game. I still think Kansas State's going to win it, but close. You're kind of backing up I mean, a little I bit. Know, the wind, uh. Let's see who gets the win, because yeah. we're all talking about the first quarter being important. K-State's not been able to come from behind and not had to win a game in a second yeah. half comeback since 1995. With Wisconsin going down, the number of unbeatens around the country is down to five. It'll be down to four after Arkansas and Tennessee get done with each other down there in Knoxville. 
chance for Arkansas to gain respect that Wisconsin was not able to gain in their game by taking down the ball. Yeah, but I like Tennessee in this ball game. I like it for one simple fact. It's played in Knoxville, Tennessee, and all those Rocky Top people. They will beat <laughs> Arkansas today, but I tell you what, it'll be a lot tougher to beat Arkansas the second time in the Georgia Dome for the SEC title. That's yeah. going to be a great game, yeah, too. It's tough to do that, especially oh. just in one month. I, I agree with Coach. I like Tennessee in this game, playing at home. They have better overall team speed. It's going to be a close game, but Tennessee has to guard against being their own worst enemy with all the everything on the line. They control their own destiny. They cannot afford to get into this game and get too conservative, but I like Tennessee to win it. Yep. Can't afford to ignore Arkansas's passing game. That's been very strong. UCLA has the strong passing game. They go to Washington trying to make it 19 straight, hoping their defense <laughs> can somehow rise up. It's a young defense. They're not in position. They're going to try to simplify things this week and try anything at this point, right? I mean, what do they got to lose? They got McNown. I mean, they got McNown. And Cade McNown is a winner. The way he wins.